I'm going to unmute my mic so you can actually hear me. <laughs> Thanks for Jason for say, saying something. Um, so welcome to Shop Talk, first Shop Talk of February. If you haven't been before, uh, and maybe let me know in chat, have you? Is this your first time, or have you been more than once? I'm curious uh, who's repeat repeat attendees and who's here for the very first time. So each week at Shop Talk, I'll share one practical thing you can do in your business to help get more customers, and we do a lot of behind the scenes sharing of different tests we're running and emails we're sending. And even elicit your help and helping us with some marketing and sales problems that we're having and get your ideas. So uh, thanks for being here. A lot of first time people. Ron, repeat. What's up, Ron? Thanks for coming back. Repeat user. We need like a repeat uh, viewer board that's like a ticker at the bottom, Ben. So repeat people get shout outs. Uh, Steven, first time. Kenny, repeat. Steven, repeat. Leo, first time. Timothy, Rob, first timer. Rose, first timer. So hopefully all of you that are first timers this time will be repeat people next time. Uh, our internal goal is to get 200 people live. And I think we've hit 150 several times, uh, like concurrent live. Uh, so anyway, we'll actually have some questions about that at the very end, some different ways uh, you can help us brainstorm to do that. Uh, so usually if this is your first time, usually we go one to two hours, uh, probably closer to the two hour range today. Uh, we got some really cool stuff prepared. Uh, also we do, we get this question all the time. And we finally met after our last shop talk and put our heads together about the best way to do this. We always get asked about replays because sometimes you can't be here the whole time and it's hosted on Zoom. So there's not a natural place for a replay. So uh, in just a minute or two, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're actually just going to start an SMS list where we can send you like all the little bonus resources we mentioned throughout. We had some worksheets and stuff last time, but if we put the link in chat, they get buried really quickly and then you can't find them. And then you ask 10 times and we send you the same links anyway. So Ben, we're going to try this this time. I don't know. This might be an abysmal failure, but <laughs> we figured we'd just have a, a little CTA during the workshop a couple of times where we have resources to give out where you can just sign up. It's all free. Um, just text a little number. And then about seven o'clock tonight, once the replay is processed and we upload it, we'll just send you the replay and all the resources we mentioned and that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry about finding it real time. So I'll talk about that as we go. But um, anyway, uh, my goal during shop talk today is that you leave with a higher converting offer than you showed up with. Meaning by the time Shop Talk ends today, uh, you have an offer that literally just converts better than it did when you showed up. And not just that you have one that technically converts better, but you know exactly how to talk about it so people want it and your best fit clients get it when you talk about what you do. And that can be surprisingly challenging to just talk about your offer and what you have clearly so that the best fit people for it, like hear it and say, yeah, I want to buy that. So that's what we're going to do coming up in a few minutes. We're going to spend the majority of our time. We're going to about 30 to 45 minutes just workshopping through and me just sharing what we do on our team and what we help our clients with uh, to create an irresistible offer. One, upon hearing it, that your clients, your perspective, your leads hear it and just really want the thing. So hang around. Um, we're going to walk through that. But first, uh, so something we do for our clients every, every month is I read a lot of books <laughs> and I love reading. I love sharing them. It's one of the best ways to just pick up ideas, to instigate creative thoughts. I was just reading one this week. Uh, this is not the one I'm going to talk about today, but it's called Fanatical Prospecting by a guy named Jeb Blunt. And uh, the book is okay so far, but there's a few things in it that have really triggered some ideas for me. Actually, I sent a whole video over to Ben the other day uh, and Bill and a few other folks on the team that get triggered from that. So I just love that. So every month for our clients, I read a book. We then summarize the book create action guides out of the practical things to do out of the book. So it's just really easy to do. You don't have to read it. You can just execute the action items and get the result from it. Uh, and one I read just last week that will probably, where did I put it? Will probably be one we send out in the next month or two or sometime this year is a really small book, which is my favorite pro tip on reading. If you read really short books, you can read a lot more books <laughs> and usually short books are really good and really dense. Um, another one of the, another one of my favorite short books is called one minute manager. Anyway, this one's called the Dan Sullivan question. So you can buy it on Amazon. We'll give, we're going to give away at least two copies on shop talk today. So the first one will be right now. So the Dan Sullivan question, really cool book It's 25 bucks on Amazon. So really honestly expensive for like a 60 page book, but you can read this whole thing in an hour. Um, really cool. So my, my number one takeaway, and those of you that were here last week will recognize this question. So I'll talk about the question in a minute. Uh, actually, the source material for this, well, yeah, random side note as well. I'm giving too many side notes here, but I'll share this as well. A lot of times what I do when I'm reading a book 
usually a book will reference four or five other books. Like they'll mention them throughout, like go check this out, or here's a book I read. And I, I immediately, almost always, if I'm liking the book I'm reading, I go buy the source books and read those. So this one was referenced in a book we've talked about several times on Shop Talk called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. So if you get into how he teaches to do a phone sale, uh, how to do phone sales, he goes through his four questions. The very first question is this, and he referenced it in the book, Expert Secrets. He's like, hey, yeah, checked out this book by Dan Sullivan called The, the, the One Question or the Dan Sullivan question. So I went and bought it and read it and it's fantastic. And you kind of get the source material, which is usually better than the people that reference the source material. Anyhow, my takeaway, my top takeaway from this book is that there is one key question you need to ask someone to help them discover what they want and how to get it. And I'll share this in a second. He shares in the, in the second half of the book, I think starting on page 48 through like 60 of this book. Again, it reads really quickly. It's a great toilet book. Uh, multiple businesses that have grown to six and even seven figures and their product is just asking this question. Like they have a consultative coaching type of service and all they do is walk people through answering this key, this question. So let me blow up my sides where I can actually read it. I have the question in smaller print below, but here's the, here's the primary question. There's a su couple of sub questions he walks you through in the book. He says, if you were, if we were having this discussion three years from today, maybe for the sake of when I read this question, put yourself in the shoes of, let's say you are a financial advisor and you sell financial products, like you sell mortgages or, or not mortgages, but you sell like IRAs and stocks or whatever you sell. So imagine you have a new client that walks in the door and they want to hire you. You work at Edward Jones or uh, Edward Jones or Fidelity or somewhere like that, or you're, you're an independent person. And they walk in the door and most of the time you would just immediately start selling them whatever the product is like, Hey, what, what's your retirement goal? Oh, I want to have a million dollars by the time I'm 60. They're like, great. Okay. So buy this stock and buy this thing and put your, put your money in this mutual fund or whatever. Dan would say, don't do that. Don't tell them what to do until you've asked them this question and walk them through the answer. The question is, if we were having this discussion three years from today, and you were looking back over those three years, what has happened to have, what it, what has to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress? I'll read it one more time. If we were having this discussion three years from today, and you were looking back over those three years, what has had what has happened? That reads weird. Ha what has happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel happy with your progress? And you just let them answer it. I've asked this in interviews. Uh, I ask this when we do coaching calls and all types of settings. This is an extremely helpful question because what it does is help them get at the root of what they actually want. Like, what do you want to happen as a result of our working together, as a result of this situation? In the book, he walks you through a couple of follow-up questions for that. And by the end, they have fully articulated exactly what they want. And then you can position your solution, your product to, to fit that, to actually fix the problem, to actually help them accomplish what it is that they want. Here's a quote that he had related to that financial advisor that started using this, that financial advisor's business, I think grew at like 80% in the first year that he injected this question before he tried to sell anything. This is what he said. I immediately went from being a peddler of products that anyone could sell to being a designer of other people's progress. That's pretty cool. So you can design the end result for them if you know what the actual end result is. So I'm going to get, we're going to give away a couple copies of this book. We'll give away one copy here. I'm going to post uh how do I do this? Everyone. There we go. I'm going to post a few links in chat to enter the giveaway. You just have to share this with one person. Share Shop Talk with one person. The, the Zoom we're having right now, you can just text it to a friend or email it to a friend. You can post it on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you want to go. I'll put a few links below that make it easy to do that. Go invite one person at least to join or broadcast it on social, whatever you want to do. And in chat, put share, put I shared or something like that. Uh, and then Ben, in a few minutes, will actually pick one person that said they shared it. Uh, and we'll, Bethany will mail the book out immediately. So, uh, Stephen, thanks for sharing, man. Appreciate it. All of you repeat people, like, I expect y'all to be sharing this. Like, if you liked it and it was good enough for you to come back a second time, uh, tell at least one friend about it. Text a friend, share it on social, um, put it in an email. Don't lie and say you shared. That'd be weird. Uh, Grimmy, Sophie, PC, Stephen, y'all are awesome. You're going into the Shop Talk Hall of Fame for being an early share. Jake, Luke, awesome. Good deal. All right. So, Ben, keep sharing. Uh, ben, have you read this book? I have not read that one yet. Have you read any Dan Sullivan stuff? Actually, I don't think so. Is what else does he have? He has Strategic Coach. That's where I know him from, which is a big coaching program. But do, do we know any of his Actually. other books? I didn't know he was an author, actually, until Russell mentioned him. I was like, oh, Dan has books. That's cool. Yeah, I think I've seen interviews and things, but I don't know if I've read it. So he has Leslie, what? Oh, go ahead, Bethany. I was going to say Leslie in the chat said that Dan has a book called Who Not How. She said um. it's very powerful. 
That's good about people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing he does, it'd be good to, as you go through this book, does he have it here too? No, he doesn't have it here. Anyway, at the back of it. So the whole book is less than hundred pages. Like you get to the basically appendix and it's page 85. And the end of the book is just telling you about his coaching program, but he does it in a non weird way. And in fact, just the formatting of the pages in the section where he's telling you about strategic coach, which is his coaching program. It's just really well done. It does. It just feels like part of the book. Uh, and he gives you good CTAs. It has a couple phone numbers, tells you the price of it, who's qualified. Like it's just a good book to model. Like any of us could write an 80 page book about one very specific um, high ROI, high impact exercise that you walk clients or customers through. And I think this is just a really good example of a simple book that drives results for Dan. Um, all right. So we've had a lot of people share. Let me call you out. Leslie. Teresa, Ginger, Rob, Kenny, Scott, Jerry, Jake, Luke. Great. We're got a lot of good shares. We need to share, we need a share board, like a little thermometer that fills up. Uh, and like do do something special when we get so many people to share. That'd be fun to do. Um, all right. So Ben, I'm gonna pick one person to share, one person to give a book to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's go with uh Jerry Kidd, first guy who shared it on Twitter explicitly. So Sweet. awesome. Yeah. So Jerry, thanks, Jerry. DM uh, Bethany uh, in Zoom. You can just click the little two and click her name, uh, your address, or just send her an email, bethany at growthfuels.com with your email, and she'll get you a copy out ASAP. She'll just Amazon it over to you. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for doing that, Jerry. I appreciate you. All right. One other thing we do for clients to help speed up their process of growing their business is share the internal test and marketing stuff that we're doing real time. Meaning as we're trying different partnership approaches or legion strategies or ad tests or funnel hacks or whatever, we try to share that real time with our clients so they can learn from that, especially if it's something going well. If it's something bad, we may say, hey, here's something that didn't work. Maybe avoid that. Uh, if we found something that works well, we'll definitely share that and shout it from the rooftop. So I like, it's fun doing that in Shop Talk as well. And we'll give out a book here in a minute associated with this. So pay attention if you didn't win a book and you want to win one. Um, so Ben, say, hey, Ben. Hey. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Somehow in my mind, I thought that might be a bigger deal. So, hey, so hey, Ben. I don't have a grand intro, you know. I need like was, special sound effects. <laughs> a random story. I was tucking our six-year-old in bed last night. And it's like, hey, buddy, I hope you, hope you sleep really well. I love you. And his response was, okay. <laughs> like, I need a better response than that. It's, just, it's like when someone says it's good to see you and you're like, it's good to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, WWE entrance. We need, we need something a little more, uh, a little more riled up. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, all right. So Ben runs our Facebook ad funnel. Um, we've shared all different types of tests over the last month that we've done. Um, anyway, this week Ben picked this one to run. Ben, give us the high level. Uh, so these are two different ads that you ran in the past right. week. One of them performed really well. One of them didn't perform well. Ben's right. going to walk us through why he tested this, like what the concept was describe each one and then we'll let all of you guess which one won and the winner one person that guesses right and win another copy of the book so anyway it's a fun way just to share stuff that's working for us so ben what's the test here why did you test it all right cool so the goal here is we're running these ads to a funnel and we wanted to do two things we wanted to get email subscribers at a reasonable cost and we've set a initial goal of 15 dollars per email subscriber and we wanted to also book calls after someone has downloaded the lead magnet. So that's the twofold goal of this. Um, so these are the ads that are running to the opt-in to get the free lead magnet, which is an ebook on client getting strategies. Hey, don't guess yet. You don't even know what the test is. Let us walk through it. No guessing yet. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Ben, option A, uh, walk, walks through like, what, what is that variation? And is that the control or are both of these new things? So I would say this one's the control because everything else is a duplicate from this. So Okay. Uh, option A here is short copy. If you hit see more, there actually isn't the see more the way it presents live on Facebook. That might've been a weird thing in the preview, but it's literally just the 280 characters. Um, that's, so that, that's the total copy right there to the point. Um, we're framing it as an ebook. Uh, you'll see the difference in the other one. And we start the copy with a compelling question. You know, uh, are you looking for more high paying clients, which, you know, typical course creators, coaches, do. I don't know anyone who isn't. Um, and the CTA that we picked for this ad is download. So just seeing how short copy performs on this one. All right. And what we tested it against was option B. What's the deal with it? Yeah. Option B is super mega long. Um, so if we start with an affirmative statement, uh, get five simple client att attracting strategies free. And then what is below the Seymour here is a full guide on one of those strategies. Like it's literally the entire thing. Um, in the format of an ad. 
and it's framed up as a guide, not an ebook. So not necessarily as like tangible, but maybe like less uh, resistance because it's a guide, not like a book. I don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, we're starting with a statement, like I said, and then we picked learn more instead of download on this one. So those are the big differences. All right, what y'all got? A or B? Which one won? A short. Talk about the ebook. B longer. It's positioned as a guide. Way more copy in it. Same image or a very close image between the two. Oh, it's like 50 50. A, B, I like a, B, these. A, B, a, B, B, but with download, Chris. Oh, that's clever. Nathan, Kenny B, Jessica A, Tom A, B, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Maybe A by like 5% is winning, but not close. Mm -hmm. All right. A, short it's people. Even. Short, don't, don't get on short. People. <laughs> short, people have, short people have attention span and they get an ebook. All right. So the winner is. Oh, let's go. Uh, okay. So the winner is a by a lot, by yeah, almost four yeah. X. So yeah. $6 per click on option a $23 per click on option B, like a substantial result, uh, between the two. Any idea why Ben, like I wouldn't have thought there'd have been that drastic of a difference. Yeah. And sometimes I think there's just weirdness that happens in the Facebook platform. You know, it's not so different that I think it could justify a 4X, but um, yeah, option A got off to a hot start. And I think it's just more to the point. And I think a question is more approachable than mm. uh, an affirmative statement. Yeah. Cool. All right. So here's the deal. We're going to try this out, see how it works. We're going to do this a few times throughout. Uh, I, I want to give out the link to the funnel, but if we do that now, it's distracting and then it gets buried in chat and you can't find it and all that. So we're going to start an SMS list, at least for a couple of weeks and test this out. Uh, if you want us to send you the link to the funnel, like all the pages you can look through and audit through a link to the ad, like you can go from the ad and go forward and find them all. Uh, text VIP to 615-903-8108. And I'll put that in chat so you can actually see that. Just send a text to that. It's free and whatever you pay for text messages, which most of us are free. Uh, and tonight we'll send you a replay of everything once it's processed, been uploaded and everything. And also I'm um, guessing like a Google doc with all the links, like a link to the ad. And there'll be some other things we mentioned throughout the workshop time. We'll just put all that together and you can grab all that. So just send text VIP to 615-903-8108. Uh, we'll respond with an auto message. And then later tonight, Ben will just compile all that and send a text, a broadcast out with all this stuff. Uh, instead of distracting now, we'll, we'll go through all that. So you'll get a link to the ad itself. You can kind of look at it, click the see more button, both variations. You can kind of see them. Uh, it'll go to the landing page. You can click schedule a call and see the application, go to the thank you page and just like look through the whole thing uh, and see if you can pick up any cool tips from it. And we'll continue to share throughout as we test this funnel, different things we're doing and you can pick up from those. So anyway, text VIP 615-903-8108. We'll put you on that little list and send you a broadcast out tonight uh, of the replay and other stuff. Cool. How's that sound? Do y'all like that better than trying to share it all real time and keep up with it? Give me some feedback real quick. Jason, you've been here a bunch. Steven is a yes. Uh, Chris, Ron, Timothy, uh, Mike. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to call, we'll come up with a better name for this and we'll call it shop talk VIP list for now. Um, but we'll send you like a reminder right before we go live a shop talk or replay after them, even if you don't show up. So you just keep up with them. Um, kind of a shop talk independent list. And as we create resources at the end, when we send our replays, we'll include those too. So maybe an easier way to do that to keep up with things versus trying to keep up with email or, or jot a bunch of links down and all that crap, which gets to be a bit cumbersome. All right, let's get to the point of why we're here today. How to create an irresistible offer in four easy steps. So I'm excited about this. Uh, this is something we've been working on a ton over the last year, just internally at Growth Tools and working on a ton with our clients. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through our framework for creating an irresistible offer. And I want you to leave the next 45 minutes with a better offer than you entered this 45 minute period with. So before we zoom into the details, let's zoom out to the high level. Three components you have to have to get customers. So customers happen by first attracting them as a lead. They know you exist on the internet. You're not a random weirdo anymore. They, they see you. Two, second thing is you build trust with them. Thirdly, you have a simple way to monetize them and for them to give you money. ATM, attract, build trust, and monetize. You have to have those three together. Uh, for all of our clients, we walk them through when we find out where they are and what they need. And we walk them through eventually over the course of a year or more, installing our entire ATM system in there. And that's a full blown Legion system that gets you way above a thousand leads a month. That's a full blown trust building system that's your content. Uh, in order to minimize the amount of time you're spending and maximize the amount of trust that you're building and three simple funnels you can install to uh, convert as many leads as possible. So we'll walk you through the whole system. But know today, as we are walking through the offer, that fits into the attract bucket. 
the, tr- the, the bucket, the thing this is helping is helping you attract more leads. And here's how it does that. You can't possibly attract enough leads or the right leads if you can't clearly talk about what it is that you sell. If you don't know what your product is and you can't clearly articulate that, there's zero chance you will attract the right kind of leads and enough of the right kind of leads. So before you can build any kind of legion strategy, first, you have to have an offer that you're confident in, like the core product you like and you're confident in, and you're confident in how you talk about the thing. So scale of one to 10, or maybe high, medium, low in chat right now, how confident are you in your offer and how you talk about your offer? Meaning when you describe it to people, do they get it and immediately want it? Or do they ask 75 questions trying to figure out what on earth it is you have to sell? So high, medium, low, how confident are you in the actual offer itself and in your ability to communicate that offer? Leslie, medium, Jessica, medium, Mike, low to medium, Timothy, medium, Jerry, very confident. Awesome, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Stephen, high, Barbara, high, Ron, high, Jason, medium, high. Good. So all of you medium and high people, fine tune your offer based on what you learn. Don't wholesale change stuff. I'm going to give you a very specific way to do this, but if yours is working really well, don't make big changes based on what I'm about to say. Make small, minute changes. Pick up a tip here or two and do it. If you have low to medium, like you might want to consider like just overhauling the thing. If it's just not converting, you don't like it at all, you don't have a lot to lose. Okay. So medium high, a lot of highs. Bruce high, yeah. but not a huge sample size. What do you think about someone knowing like quantifying medium to high confidence? Like what kind yeah, of result? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some gut level confidence. Uh, sure. I mean, unless you know you're maybe just a high confidence person, then you just need to refine your gut intuition on that. But uh, also, I mean, that hopefully the only people that can be higher are the people that are actively selling it in large quantities. Hmm. If you're not actively selling it in high quantities, maybe in your visualizations and affirmations at the beginning of the day, you've psyched yourself up into being confident in it. But like, the only way you can be extremely confident in what you sell is if you sold a bunch of it and, and like people consistently resonated with it over and over and over again. Less than that, you're medium to high at best. Anyway, it's a super subjective scale, but that would be my, sure. that'd be my measurement of it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, oh, this is a good question. Or Jason, I think it also matters where the offer sits and versus call, like how warm the lead is. Uh, and maybe that's if we were to make an imaginary scale of how crunchy and how irresistible your offer is. A really good offer converts warm and lukewarm people. An irresistible offer converts cold people. That's the hardest thing to crack is cold traffic converting. An irresistible offer converts cold traffic. So uh, yeah, maybe that's a way to think about it as well. So here's what we're going to do. Two parts of the workshop. Part one, I'm going to walk over just high level and really specific examples of what is an offer. Uh, could you could read six books on offers and get very varying definitions of them. I'm going to give you a definition that we use and march forward with. In part two, this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time. I'm going to show you how to make one. And so I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you the examples, break them down, share the frameworks. So and we're going to do a little bit of workshopping live uh, in chat. So ready for that. Also, uh, Chris and G are both here and they're both clients of ours. So Chris and G, as we work through this uh, and work through part one and part two, Feel free to turn on turn on your mic, turn on the camera, and we can workshop your examples to help refine your offers uh, specifically. We use you all as examples as we go if you want that. All right, part one, what is an offer? Here's my definition of an offer. An offer is, a one, is one page that clearly articulates exactly what you sell so that your clients get it and buy. It should be contained on one piece of paper And you should be able to, when clearly articulated, people get it and want it. Going a step further, your offer is one of the single most important pieces of paper in your entire business. Because nearly, not every, nearly everything you do, the hub of that is the offer. Product fulfillment that has to come out of the offer before you can fulfill anything, you have to articulate what it is. Your Twitter posts that you make, your Facebook ads, your outreaches to partners to get on their podcast, all that comes out of the offer because to know who to attract and how to sell them and what to say, first you have to articulate what it is that you're actually selling. So all the blog posts, all your website, your Instagram, your emails, your Facebook, your podcast, your Twitter, all of that 
You can do it without an offer clearly articulated because everyone does it, but you can't do it effectively without the offer being articulated. So I think the way I visualize an offer is it sits in the middle and everything comes out of it. When you go to write that five-part launch sequence, you should look back at your offer first and the sequence should reflect what the offer is. When you go to write that Facebook ad, it should come out of, when Ben sits down to write the couple of tests he's going to do this week, he should first look at the offer and write out of there. In fact, we print out our offer and send it to our entire uh, employee base. So they always have it laminated on their desk. They have the offer clearly articulated and we all can have what it is. Actually, I just showed you our vision because right now I don't know where I put my offer piece of paper. <laughs> I don't, it left my desk somehow. Anyway, but we do that for everybody. Uh, so think about your offer as the hub of everything. If it's not right, everything else will be slightly incorrect. Meaning if you're, if you're not getting as many sales as you want, it might just totally be an offer articulation thing. So two reasons your offer might suck. It's too broad, meaning it's targeted to everyone. It, the, the, the problem it solves is way too broad. And the number of people it solves it for are way too broad. So it really helps no one. Number two, it's too vague. No one can understand it. Like, what is it and how does it work? Those should be two questions that are easily answered after reading anybody's offer. I, I know exactly who it's for. I know exactly what it is. And I know exactly how it works. If I finish reading your offer and I don't know those three answers, then you're losing conversions for no good reason, except for we haven't clearly articulated. So mm -hmm. uh, I think about uh, one of my favorite words that everybody makes fun of me for is how crunchy is it? Like when I read your offer, is it crunchy? Like, do, can I sink my teeth into it? Or is it like some soggy Cheerios that's been sitting in the bowl for three months or three months? I'd be really, it'd be like rotten by then for a long time. And it's just kind of like, what is this? I don't even know what this is. Like it has no flavor to it. So I'm going to read to you as an example, our offer. So this is our offer on one piece of paper. You can't really see that on the slide because it's zoomed out so far. So I just screenshot it and broke it into two pieces. So I'll just read through both of it. Now, Ben, I'm going to read through it, each part, uh, read through it in halves. And I want you to grade it on like a one through 10, 10 being extra crunchy just out of the cereal box. One being the Oreo, the Oreo, the Cheerios have been sitting in the, in the bowl of milk for like five hours and they're super soggy. Give me like a, a crunchiness scale as you read through this and be brutal on us. This is our offer. So you should be able to, at the end of this to know who it's for, what it solves, uh, what, were the, what were the categories? Um, how it works. Like, what is it? How does it work? And who it's for? That should be abundantly clear after reading through it. So I'm going to read through it now. Here we go. Pick one product already. Yeah. <laughs> I keep alternating between serial types. All right. Growth University. This is our, this is our product. This is our core offer. This is what we sell as a company. Growth University is a monthly coaching service. We make it nearly impossible to fail at growing your course and coaching business. Specifically, we help you grow to a million dollars per year without having to work crazy hours and become an expert marketer. And we put our money where our mouth is. Mandatory refund policy. If you aren't totally in love with the marketing plan and strategies that I create for you, if you don't get unreasonably excited by it and see it as the best path to grow in your business, I require you to ask for your money back and you can keep everything. ROI guarantee. If you don't make 100% of your investment back in our first three months of working together, we don't deserve your money. I'll give you a full refund plus $1,000 to hire another coach. All I ask is that you give an anonymous effort. Growth University costs $9.97 per month. It also has a setup fee, which includes a complete marketing and sales audit, creating your marketing plan, picking your marketing strategies, and your first full month of coaching. All right, that's the first half. There's a second half, which is all the deliverables of what you actually get. But you should it should be abundant of what it is and who it's for. Then give us a scale, 1 to 10, how crunchy is it? Man, I don't know. I feel like we've scrutinized this one a lot. I have yeah. to get, I like it. I'll give it a nine. And the only part that's maybe a little bit vague would be what becoming an expert marketer means or mm. quantifying crazy hours. Yeah. Yeah. We could get more specific there. I don't even know if I like to become an expert marketer piece. We'll break down like where that fits into the offer structure. All right, chat, everybody here, Chris, uh, Kofi, Mike, Jason, Ben, great, great or quick scale of one to 10. This is the first half. How crunchy? Very crunchy. All right. Give us some numbers, one to 10. We'll read the second half as you grade it. Feel free to grade the second half as I'm reading it as well. Here we go. Second half. This is what you get with Growth University. Nine, nine, nine. Agree with Ben. Good. All right. I like it. Cool. This is what you get with the Growth University. It should be unequivocally clear exactly what the deliverables are when you hire us by reading this. 
Meaning we should be able to just, we should do this, Ben. We should just send this out as an email with the CTA at the bottom that says hire us and you click for a sales call. Like that should actually work with kind of problem aware, hire, you know, people that are a little further along in the awareness scale. All right, here's the second half. This is what you get with Growth University. Pillar number one, revenue roadmap. This includes our onboarding call, full marketing and sales funnel audit, learning how your business ticks, creating or refining your company vision, goals, avatar, and offer, as well as creating your full marketing plan and picking the correct strategies to grow your business from where it's at now to over a million dollars a year. Pillar number two, expert training. This includes your training, access to my private playbooks, all resources, checklists, templates, white files. There's multiple typos here. Ignore those. You need over-the-shoulder tutorials where you get to watch me do the work so you can quickly learn and coach review of every asset and activity you do. Pillar number two. Oh, if you want to get access, text the number. Ben, drop it in chat again. We'll, we'll email out like, all, or text out this all tonight. Replay plus this doc, and I'm going to show you another one in a second and give you some worksheets, all that. We'll just, instead of giving them real time, it all gets lost. We'll just text it at, at seven o'clock tonight. Uh, so yeah, if you want these, uh, Ben, drop it, and we'll text out this document as well. Pillar number three, unlimited on-demand coaching. Oh, I didn't finish pillar number two. Did I? Mm -hmm. No, I said that. All right, pillar number three, unlimited on-demand coaching. This is your unlimited on-demand coaching access, weekly plans of action sent to you, a second set of eyes on all your marketing and expert accountability so you stay on track. Pillar number four, Inc. 5000 Mastermind. This includes being matched with a small group of four to eight peers running similar businesses at a similar business stage. And we provide weekly training by our CEO, our marketing team, and outside experts. All right, scale of one to 10, how crunchy? Ben, what do you think? Ooh. This is, to me, unequivocally clear. Um, no. So I'm going to say 10. There's multiple edits I would make, but I don't know if they'd bring it up on the crunchiness go. I might bring it up on the yeah. uh, other areas, but every time I read through it, I find other things to adjust. But cr well, 10, 10, 10. I think good. about, if it'd be confusing to people, I don't think so. Yeah, no, not confusing. I don't think. Yeah. 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 All right, here's the result. Last, last year, we started working on our offer, meaning be able to clearly articulate it on one piece of paper. Once we did that and rolled it out to the entire company and let that infuse itself into our emails and ads and everything we did, our conversion rates lead to client increase by 65%. With another client, we did this. Well, I didn't prep this case study, but his name is Matt. Dang it. He does. Um, what's the software you use, Ben, the old CRM um, high level? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he has a high level support service. I wish I could remember the name of it off the top of my head. Anyway, I can't think of it. We did this, we did this exercise for him a year and a half ago. We just articulated the offer and then let it infuse itself. We just changed the copy on the website to reflect the offers, what we did. His sales doubled that month just by like, this is what we sell. Let's just make sure this says this everywhere. Yeah, Matt Desano, that's his name. We can Google yeah. him and find his URL and let people go check it out. Uh, but now I, I haven't checked the site in six months or so, but the H1 on the site, the CTAs on the site, all just aligned to the offer because the offer was unequivocally clear. All right, let me let me read one other one and then we'll get on to how you do this. So this is another client of ours, Chad Allen. Um, I'm not even gonna tell you what he does because I shouldn't need to introduce him if I read his offer. You should just know exactly what he does. So here's part one. Book Proposal Academy Elite, long name, is a six month coaching program. We help you attract an agent or book publisher in six months without having to navigate the archaic book publishing world on your own and avoid all the mistakes every time, every first time author makes. Specifically, I personally help you create an irresistible book proposal and build the foundation of an author platform that will impress industry decision makers and get you an awesome book deal. Like, I mean, I know what he does now. Like, it's super clear. And I put my money where my mouth is via two guarantees. The coaching kickoff guarantee. If you're not blown away, after attending your first coaching call, I require you ask for your money back. This allows you to give you a chance to check out the program and get started with the training material. And we have a second guarantee, the 90-day book proposal guarantee. If you are not confident in the direction of your book proposal, after your first 90 days, you qualify for a full refund. All I require is that you give it an honest effort. Book Proposal Academy Elite cost $5,000. Scale of one to 10, how crunchy? Chat, Ben, give me a number. I think this one is very clear to me. This one might be more clear than ours, actually. <laughs> like, yeah, I like yeah, this yeah. one a little better. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10. Everybody's giving it 10s. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I should have prepped a bad one. I, actually, Matt sent me one, but I didn't take the time to take screenshots. We, mm. we need to pull up a bad one, maybe at the end or something, show what like a not good one looks like. Sure. All right, here's the second half. Here's what you get. This is what you get with Book Proposal Academy Elite. Pillar number one, expert training. This includes our Book Proposal Academy training, which includes 37 private video trainings from me. They cover every square inch of what you'll need to know and drastically speed up your path to getting your first book bill. Pillar number two, unlimited on-demand coaching. 
This includes unlimited 24-7 email support, your own dedicated one-on-one monthly call with Chad and access to our live group coaching calls every other week. Pillar number three, proposal review. This includes Chad personally reviewing and signing off on your book proposal before you send it. This ensures that you are totally confident that you've done everything correctly and have the best chance possible to get your dream book deal. Scale of one to 10, I give it a 10 and a half again. <laughs> like that one's <laughs> really good. Uh, yeah, 10, nice. 10, 10, 10, 10. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what I would change in that, honestly. I also like, I didn't catch this. Jeanette, we should make a line for this. We have, well, I'll give you some, some, some like syntaxes we use in a minute to, to write these out. But I like this. This ensures that as an option for that second sentence. We have a couple optional second sentences we do when we're writing these, but this ensures might be an interesting uh, alternate Jeanette to meaning, which is another word we'll start that sentence with. If it's slightly, we talk about it, but maybe the the things we mentioned there aren't abundantly clear because they're not common ways of describing the thing. We'll say meaning and then go into more detail. Um, but an interesting alternate to that is this ensures, like what will it do for you? Uh, which you can you can get into a trap if you try to describe too much of that in the offer. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling here. So that's what an offer is. Let's go back to the definition so we're clear. An offer is one page that clearly articulates exactly what you sell so that your clients get it and buy it. It is the hub of everything. Also, it's an internal document. This is not something built primarily for the purpose of sharing externally. This is an internal document so that everything you do, product, marketing, and sales uses it and actually takes that into the trenches to actually use. Now, I do think you can probably send this as an email, a slightly modified version as an email to probably convert really well. Um, yeah, so you've seen two examples. You know how it works. You've seen a result. Let's talk about how you make yours. Everybody ready for that? Yeah. So uh, our offers have four parts, a definition, a guarantee, the price, and the deliverables. We're tinkering around with the fifth, fifth part, but we haven't got that clearly lined out yet. So we'll leave that out. Maybe talk about that later. We haven't even quantified it for ourselves yet, but I, th I think there might need to be a fifth part. So a little teaser for maybe three or four months from now, we'll share that. All right, so let's look at the offer I showed you of ours. This is the Growth University offer. And I have just highlighted each part so you can see it. Now, you can't really read that, but that's okay. Uh, but uh, we've read through it a couple of times now. Part one, Growth University is a monthly coaching program. That is the definition of the product. Part two is the guarantee. We have two guarantees, the mandatory refund policy and the ROI guarantee. We articulate those. By the way, uh, guarantees are a whole separate section. We're not going to go detail on those today. We need to have a shop talk just about guarantees. Uh, but they are one of the most efficient and clearest ways to articulate what it is that you sell. So that's why we structured at the top because it just like says exactly by saying the result they'll get and what will happen if they don't. So it builds trust. It talks about the offer in a different way. That's part two is the guarantee. Part three is the price. Literally, what does it cost? And part four is what do you get? The deliverables. Definition, guarantee, price, deliverables. So I'm going to walk through uh, how to, oops, how to create your definition and your deliverables. We're going to leave prices fairly straightforward, although we could have a pricing talk specifically. Guarantees are a little more complicated, so we'll leave those for later. I want to go over specifically definition and deliverables today. And I want you to leave with the definition of your product and the deliverables explicitly clear, abundantly clear in your mind, articulated on paper. So uh, let's talk about definition. You know something, it, well, yeah, any, any first part of your offer, that, that top part that we've read for us and with Chad, you need to be able to say it to your mother-in-law who doesn't understand what she thinks you're a drug dealer because you do stuff on the computer and you touch the internet occasionally. Like you need to be able to describe your offer to her and she gets it in three sentences or less. And that's what your definition does. So I'll get, I'm going to walk you through the syntax, walk you through a few examples and give you a little exercise to do it. And I won't, I want y'all to do it. Actually, we'll give another copy of the book here in a minute uh, for a couple of people that post their definitions. All right, here's the syntax. Product name, Growth University, is a, what is it? What's the product type? Monthly coaching program. Cool. I, I immediately know where to put it in my mind. I got a category to put it in. It's not a membership and a SaaS and a course and a coaching. Maybe it has those components. You can't sell all that crap though. You have to pick a type and use it. Product name is a product type. <laughs> Jason, I read that slide as my mom and the police need to hear it and understand it. What did I say? You said uh, Angela. Oh, your mother. Oh, 
<laughs> that's great. Yeah. The good stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. So product name is a product type. Growth University is a monthly coaching service. We make it, and you could, you could alternate some words here. I like using the nearly impossible to language for any educational type of topic that's trying to accomplish some end result that's hard. Uh, but you can vary that with those wordings. We make it nearly impossible to fail at insert the result you want people to get, the big result you want people to get. So we make it nearly impossible to fail at growing your business, growing your online business. You could use cl- uh, quantifiers there or clarifiers. Those are the first two sentences. So very, very, very simple, but extremely clarifying. Product name is a product type. Growth University is a monthly coaching program. We make it nearly impossible to fail at growing your online business. Cool, simple. Set third sentence. This one's a little more complex, but not too for hard. Specifically, love the word because it just goes in a little bit more detail. Whereas in the second sentence, you said the big result, growing your online business. Uh, in this one, we're going to go into a little more detail about like the very specific thing they want. Specifically, I help you grow your business to a million dollars plus a year in less than a year without having to become an expert marketer and... What was the other one? Oh, and work crazy hours. Those are the two right. that we pick based on like client research and stuff. They're not perfect. So specifically, I help you achieve a, uh, achieve a specific result in some amount of time without having to do things they don't want to do or do things they found to be really hard by doing them. So let's piece it all together into like three sentences that you can read. Growth University is a monthly coaching service. We make it nearly impossible to fail at growing your course and coaching business. Specifically, we help you grow to a million dollars per year without having to work crazy hours and become an expert marketer. No ambiguity in there of what it is. Very clear. And now we can build the rest of the offer. Now that we've defined what it is that we sell, we can build the rest of the offer off of that. So I want uh, Chris, Kofi, y'all feel free if you want to unmute, uh, turn your camera on, anybody in chat. I want to workshop a few of these real quick. Y'all share what your product is what the problem you solve is. And let's just, we're not going to pull up a Google doc. Maybe we'll do it at the very end, but let's just kind of think through this real quick together and give a few examples of that before we move into part two of the deliverables. Chris, you're on live. Um, yeah. do you, do you feel like you could fill in the blank with these pretty quickly or do you feel stuck? Well, I, I was doing it while you were, while you were yeah. talking about it because I'm embarrassed that I don't have this, but yeah, I, I, I started, I started there. Yeah. Um, I said Uptick is an online software service that makes it easy to have meaningful conversations that build great working relationships with your team. We do this by providing you with questions and structure that give you context you need to lead them well. And because each person feels heard, you'll establish the foundation of trust necessary for a happy, healthy team. Okay, let me say that back to you in way less words. It doesn't, doesn't feel super crunchy to me. So. Not crunchy yet, because here's one, one trap you can get into with your offer. You start describing how it works. Mm, we don't yeah, really want yeah. to do that yet which we're going to do uh, later with deliverables do it later yeah and deliverables and yeah so let me say it. what was the name of it again fresh uptick. uptick uptick is a is um, an online software service SaaS. Works. i just wanted to put it in a way that people wouldn't use people yeah, uptick don't is, a, is a monthly software service we make okay. it nearly impossible to fail at engaging at at keeping your team engaged by having, yeah, by, keep, by keeping your team engaged. And is that, would that be right? Or is that, is that feel yeah, like maybe we yeah. took off? Yeah. yeah. Is that the big, when it's, yeah, you, we use one-on-ones basically, but, but they're one-on-ones that have dynamic question sets. So you put a thing in there, you get a different question every week on topics. Hmm. It's a very dynamic um, thing and people love, love it because it's interesting and it, it, it hmm. changes it up each one-on-one. How about this? We make it nearly impossible to fail at having employees that love working at your company. Because that's the result of having quality one-on-ones and having like really good relationships with the people you work with, right? Right, exactly. Yep. Specific, so that's the big result. We make it nearly impossible to fail at having a team that loves you, loves your mission, and their their spouse would threaten them if they decided to leave. Something Dude, like I'm that. so glad we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's keep going. Specifically, I help you have um, specifically, I help you have great one-on-one conversations. I mean, is that the, you know, one-on-one meetings? Uh, th- that gets into the mechanics, which I don't really want to okay. do that yet. Um, well, well, you could, you, we, you could make an offer. Like specifically, I help you retain fantastic employees by keeping the communication honest and uh, honest. Let's, let's say this. Specifically, I help you increase employee happiness and retention by 50% in your first 90 days 
without having to run complicated or cumbersome HR initiatives. Not exactly right, but something like that. It's yeah, not yeah, about yeah. the mechanics, it's not about one-on-ones yet. It's about right, I help right. you increase engagement and retention or, or retention and results. Those are the, like, I care about retention and results with our team. Uh, right. Engagement feels like super, I don't even know what that is. Like we have conversations, right, right, we've had right, conversations right. all the time. I feel like we're engaged, but like retention, I get that. Results, I get that. And that should be the result of using the product. That's the specific thing. And I like, I attach a number to it, but it makes it crunchy if I'm able to say specifically, I help you increase retention and results by 25% in your first six months or 90 days without yeah. having to do super complicated things or really change much of what you're doing at all. Yeah. And the offer content that I I'm going through right now, the stuff, uh, love the stuff, by the way, from growth has been fantastic, but I did the optimization, went into the offer and I I'll say, you know, the, the, op, the, uh, the lead magnet says, would you like to boost productivity, increase trust and have a happier, healthier team? Mm. So it's kind of getting to that, getting to those three things that you're mentioning, like, you know, yeah. so that, so specifically, we're going to boost your team's productivity. We're going to increase the trust on the team. And you're going to have a happier, healthier team. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Let's read a couple of these, Chris. If you want, let's work. Like one good way to figure out your own is like work on other people's because there are ways yeah. to do than your own. <laughs> like it'd take me forever to do my own, but yeah. we can work on other people's and fix them all in like 30 seconds. So let's read, let's pick maybe one or two out of chat. Uh, all right. Yeah. Brick David had a good O'Sullivan. One. He had one. The goat. Okay, let's just read it and see see if it passes the the parameters here, and if we can make it a little better. David O'Sullivan, the Go To Therapist Mentorship is a mentorship program for private practice physical therapists. We make it nearly impossible to fail at getting great results with your most complex patients without flaring them up and risking your reputation. Specifically, we help you make sense of your patient's symptoms, explain the problem, solution, and plan for your patient and keep them on track through a graded exposure rehab program for results, reviews, and referrals. Okay, so I think I'd grade it like a seven out of 10, six and a half out of 10, because we get into mechanics of how we're going to do it. Notice the second, like, I think a, a tendency is specifically I help you and then it's say how you do it. The goal there is specifically, let, let's read back through ours. Growth, uh, let's do this version. This is a little easier to see. Growth University is monthly coaching service. I didn't say who it was for yet. We can talk about that in the next line. We're making it nearly impossible to fail at growing your course and coaching business. So this is for online businesses that sell courses and coaches primarily, that sell courses and are coaches primarily. Other people get it, but like that's the primary focus. Specifically, now I don't go into any mechanic of how we do it. Notice what's not here. That's more important than what is here. We help you grow to a million dollars per year. Up here, we said grow it. Here we get more specific with the result. A million dollars per year without having to work crazy hours and become an expert marketer. So let's read back through Dan, uh, David's again. We make it nearly impossible to fail at getting great results with your most complex patients without flaring them up and risking your reputation. I'd probably just delete that second part for now and put that in a third sentence. Third sentence. Um, so let's workshop this a little bit. The go-to therapist mentorship is a mentorship program for private practice physical therapists. I might would say, and Ben, feel free to chime in here and Chris as well. The go-to therapist mentorship is a, by saying mentorship program again, I'm still not super clear what that is. Like that's not a known enough product type in my mind. Uh, maybe it is in other people's minds. It's not mine. I'm like, I still am like fuzzy on, uh, is this coaching? Is this like, like, what is this thing? I wouldn't even put pr the product type of mentorship as like a, like a super established product type. So it doesn't like carry a lot of punch. How does that hit you, Ben and Chris? Yeah, you could probably rephrase as coaching. And I like coaching better than con like business consultancy or something too stuffy mm. like that. Right. Yeah. Human. You could say one-on-one -on -one coaching. That might be the same as mentorship. Mm. I feel like mentorship's a little bit, and you have it in the name. So saying it again is a bit redundant and doesn't right. use the words very well. You kind of waste real estate. So let, let's say this. The go-to therapist mentorship is a one-on-one -on -one intensive coaching program. That might be just in an intensive personal coaching program or something. That's the, kind of the same thing, but I understand what coaching is. Like that's a very established product type. All right. We make it nearly impossible to fail at, I'm not totally sure, get great results with your most complex patients without flaring them up and risking your reputation. So let's leave this without, because that kind of confuses me some. Yeah. Um, we make it nearly impossible to fail. I like healing is fewer words at healing your most difficult physical therapist patients or treating maybe treating on. yeah at getting amazing results great results 
something like that. Cause that's what you're going for here. Like the complex people are hard to get results for. We get results for them. Mm. So we make it nearly impossible to fail at getting great results for your, the hardest patient. And we need to work through the word physical therapist in here. So we know who we're targeting anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the raw material for the sentence. It can be workshop a little bit more mm. specifically. We help you speed up the recovery time of your patients by 50% without having to, and I think they explain the problem. Well, without right. flying them up or risking your reputation. Oh, there you go. That's where that goes. Yeah. Without getting them at, I guess that's like getting their like joints, like them person, like their body actually flared up. Mm. Without, ha- without them having setbacks or rip- risking your reputation might be a more common way to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that feels, I get what that is. That makes sense. How does that feel to you, Chris? I'm a little lost on it. <laughs> yeah. we, we need a Google doc and type it out. That way we can actually see it. We might do that at the very end. We'll pull up a few more. And then we got quite a few people posted them in chat. So if yeah. we have time at the very end, we'll pull up a Google doc and like type these out and like literally work them up. Cause that, I think I can see it now. It needs to be written down. Let's jump to the second part and we'll, we'll swing back to the definition. Can you see how writing this out clarifies like everything? And it makes everything else just, it gives you categories to get put your thing within, which is just what we're talking about. Like what are the categories we put our stuff in? Now, how do we talk about it? And let's, that ble- let's let that bleed to everything else. Yeah, was that helpful, David? Mm-hmm. Good. Would love to hear from, uh, who was yeah. the physical therapist one? That was David. Well, that was David. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right. Deliverables. Let's talk about the last part of the offer. We talked about the first part, the definition. That's the first three sentences. Again, the, the test it passes is you tell your mother-in-law at Thanksgiving dinner who thinks you're a drug dealer on the internet exactly what you do in those three sentences. And she's like, oh, my friend Susie needs that. Or, oh, my son-in-law does the computer too, or whatever she says. You know, They get it and they might even think of somebody because it's so clear what you do. It has to end the police. Yes. You tell the, you tell the wall too. <laughs> Uh, okay. So deliverables, uh, main, main, what are the three to four primary deliverables, not results? We're not talking about, we talked about results up, up the top general, the big result and the specific result for your ideal best fit client. What are the three to four primary deliverables, things that your clients get, your customers get when they buy the product. Now there's two, there's no, well, let me give you two frameworks I use here. If you have a, co- there's way more than just coaching and course businesses. I'm using those because a lot, a lot of our people are, are in those categories. But if you're in SaaS or like a Chris is or something else, you can use these and slightly modify them and they work perfectly fine. Um, coaching. I like labeling the three, I, call, uh, uh, I like calling them pillars. What are the four pillars that people get? You could call them deliverables. You can call them whatever you want. I'll use the word pillars just to have a unique way of talking about it. Three pillars for coaching, the plan, the training, and the coaching. Plan, training, and coaching. Those are three easy categories to categorize all the things you do within. So all the different little trinkets and different features and different things you do in your coaching, almost always, and almost every coaching business I've seen, and we've looked at hundreds of them, can fit in these three categories. And they're easy ways to explain what you do without getting too complex. What you don't want to do is have to talk for 30 minutes for people to get what you have. You want to do it on one piece of paper. So let me give you an example of plan, training, and coaching. I'll use us or a slightly kind of version of us for this. Plan. This includes me personally evaluating your business and making a personalized roadmap for you to achieve X result training. This includes video and cheat sheets to make it easy to key action, to do X, Y, Z, to not flare your patients up, to send your patients home with very specific instructions. So the next week when they come back, they're on track coaching. This includes weekly live calls for one-on-one help. Here's two key phrases. When you're describing the three pillars, this includes almost Every time we start the sentence, notice this includes, let me put my cursor up here. Uh, This includes, this includes, this includes. It forces you to talk in deliverables and not get into lots of adjectives and marketing language. The goal of this isn't marketing language at all. It is to overtly describe the thing you're you're selling. This includes is a great first sentence starter. A great second sentence starter, if needed, is meaning. So this includes weekly live calls for one-on-one help for me and our marketing team, meaning at any point you get stuck, you can jump on a call within 48 hours and have my help and the help of your peers to solve any obstacle you have. So you kind of show them how they would use it. That's what meaning does. This includes, describes what they get. Meaning describes how they'll use it. So you can use that if needed in some of these and kind of interchange that a little bit. Let me give you another framework for course. So with coaching, it was plan, training, and coaching. For course, 
training, coaching, and tools are three categories that almost every course creator can put their offer within and talk about it very clearly. Let me give you an example of that. Training. This includes, so imagine you're a course creator. You sell a design course or something. This includes 13 in-depth training videos that you can access 24-7, meaning you'll learn exactly how to create high converting websites um, on your couch. I don't know. That's a bad sentence, but you get the point. Coaching. This includes unlimited same day email support and twice weekly live coaching calls with me, my coaching team, and our other entrepreneurs just like you. Tools. This includes access to our private seven figure swipe file, templates, examples, cheat sheets, and every MarTech tool you'll need to hit your goals, meaning you'll never be stuck with technology ever. Yeah, so that's the basic gist. Training coaching tools, great uh, for deliverables, uh, for coaching, or great deliverables for a course, for coaching, plan, training, coaching are great categories. Uh, to think within. So let's read, let's reread the second part of our offer and keep those categories in mind and notice what we're doing. So now you know how deliverables are structured, how to talk about that in your offer. Let's read it. Hey, Andrea, good to see you. We're going to interview Andrea in a minute. So y'all hang tight. Andrea's got a cool story. All right. This is what you get with Growth University. Pillar number one, revenue roadmap. This includes, key phrase, our onboarding call, full marketing and sales funnel audit, learning how your business ticks, creating or refining your company vision, goal, avatar, and offer, as well as creating your full marketing plan and picking up picking the correct strategies to grow your business from where it's at now to a million dollars a year. Pillar number two, expert training, plan. Let's say, pillar number one, we, we renamed it to something a little more fancy, revenue room. It's just a plan. That's what we're talking about. That's the core category it's in. Second part, training for coaching. Remember, that's the second pillar, expert training. This includes your training, access to my private playbooks, all resources you need, over-the-shoulder tutorials when you get to watch, where you get to watch me do the work so you can quickly learn and coach review for every asset and activity you do. But the number three, unlimited on-demand coaching. This is your unlimited on-demand coaching access, weekly plans of actions to send to you a second set of eyes, da 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 Pillar number four, this is an additional pillar for us that we added recently, the mastermind that we're starting and getting going, the Inc. 5000 mastermind. This includes being matched with a small group of 48, four to eight peers running similar businesses at a similar business stage. And we provide weekly training by our CEO, our marketing team, and weekly experts. Yeah. So think in categories for your deliverables. For course creators, training coaching tools are really good categories to think within. So you don't have to read, you don't have to create anything new if you already have your, your actual product, but compile it and sort it in those three categories and then talk about it with this includes and meaning. And that'll crunch it up in a way where people can get it immediately because I know what it is. If you have a coaching product, plan, training, and coaching are three categories. No, probably almost no matter what, how your coaching works, that you can sort it within. Whether it's a group or one-on-one or some hybrid of the two, doesn't matter. There's almost always a plan, whether it's a custom plan or a, a set plan. There's almost always training, whether it's live or pre-recorded. There's almost always, well, there's definitely coaching in a coaching program. So you just describe how it works there, whether it's group calls or one-on-one -on -one calls or Zoom calls or whatever. You just categorize the deliverables within that and use this includes in meaning to help it. Okay, so I've made a uh, irresistible offer template. This is a three-page worksheet uh, that we use when clients hire us to help them make their offer. Uh, this all is fairly new to us over the last eight months. We've started like really dialing this in and have come a long ways with this. Uh, what you've seen, the two offers we've read and gone over are kind of the, the results of this. If you want to get, instead of putting, I've talked about this in the very beginning for those of you that have logged on since then, uh, instead of giving the links out, you need to distract with that now. And then they get buried in chat and you have to ask for them again. We're just going to send the replay of this out along with uh, a link to our irresistible offer template. And it has a couple of examples of it in, in it as well. Uh, and it literally just, um, like page one, it walks you through the definition. If you see this up here, it has like the prompts there and examples of them. It gets into pricing and some examples of it and how to structure it and talk about it. Uh, gets into page three or page two is the guarantee. Gives you, we didn't talk about that in depth today, but it gives you examples and how to think about when to use that. Page four uh, or part four has what you get in the deliverables and all those different frameworks we talked about. So you literally just print it out or use it, file, make a copy on Google Docs and use that. And by the end of that, it's pulled out of you what your offer is. And then you just slap it into a Google Doc and write the narrative version and use the examples to do that. Anyhow, if you want the worksheet, just text and you're not on the Shop Talk SMS list already. We'll send a text out at 7 p.m. So after this is done and it's rendered in Zoom, we'll upload it, make a little Google Doc with all the little links and resources we mentioned throughout, and you can just get that. So it's free. There's nothing to pay or anything. Just type 615-903-8108 and text VIP. Uh, ben will then compile all this, send a text out, and you'll have it. Uh, if you want the worksheet. So, yeah, cool. it's possible to get replays of shop talks. 
past shop talks. Yeah, maybe so. We should probably do something with that. Maybe so. Yeah, we'll That's good next week, Ginger. Maybe we'll like put all those in the resource section. What'd you say, Ben? I said, yeah, I want to compile an archive so that it's easy to access. Yeah, we're going to put it on YouTube eventually, and then it'll just automatically be there. Um, totally. But we, we keep saying that, not doing it. So we'll get we'll get to it eventually. Well, maybe a month or two yeah. from now. We're kind of settling on the format and getting it flowing and whatnot. Uh, archive would be cool with the slide. Oh, yeah, we'll put, well, slides are good. We'll put the slides in there as well. So that'll be in the thing we sent out at 7 p.m. Yep. So slides, all that stuff. Yeah, sure. And it sounds like Jeanette just sent a message. All of our clients get links to them. So we probably have a link to them somewhere. We can maybe put all those in or something. Anyway, text VIP to that phone number. We'll send you all the stuff. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Coming up in a minute, uh, maybe 15 minutes or so from now, Andrea just logged on about five, 10 minutes ago. We're going to interview her. Andrea, so first of all, I went to your life coaching site and pulled your screen, your headshot from that. And then I found your fitness site and I was like, I got to use this image because it looks like you might kill me in the image. Uh, so I swapped them out like five minutes before we started. Um, anyway, so we're going to interview Andrea. Uh, Andrea, Andrea Lowell.com. We'll give you the links and talk about her in a minute. She sells a coaching service and an online course. Uh, she's a life coach, helps people with self-awareness and trauma, um, does group coaching and one-on-one. Uh, she recently sent us an email that said, I'm totally full and cannot take any additional clients. So she's going to talk about how she did that with podcast interviews, going on other people's podcasts, walk us through the specifics of that. We got some links of podcast interviews she did. We'll share so you can listen to them and see how she did it and kind of walk through all the mechanics of that. But first, zoom out from guarantee for, or zoom out from offers for a second. For your business to consistently grow and get customers, you must have all three of these pillars working well. You must have to be attracting leads regularly. You must be building trust with those leads and you must have a simple way for them to give you money. What we've talked about today with your offer fits into that attract bucket, meaning before you can do any of that, you have to know what it is you sell and who wants it. And clearly articulate it so that when you write your emails, when you write your ads, when you go on podcasts, when you do any marketing activity, you're pointing back to eventually directly or maybe indirectly your offer. So today we've talked about the attract bucket. You have to have all three of these things running. So if you want to know how to do more of those, come to Next Shop Talks to we'll talk about it. Also, we'll give you a link at the very end if you want to talk to us and like audit your business and give you some tips and tricks, make a marketing plan for you. We'll tell you how to do that. All right, let's, let's go light for a second. I want to give you a few uh, recommended, a few cool things that I found in the last couple of weeks that you can check out. Make a list of these, go check them out. We'll, we'll link to them maybe uh, in the SMS. But these are a few articles, a few videos, a few things I found recently that was kind of cool and I shared with the team, sharing with you as well. So this is article by... Tim Ferriss called 17 questions that changed my life. And I didn't realize this was an article. It somehow popped back up in Twitter or something recently and it got back on my radar, but there was one question. Um, oh yeah. Question number one. So I, there's 17 questions in the article. I pulled out my five favorite just to show on the slide. But number one is one of my, I, I use some variants of the question now because I didn't, I didn't realize I took it from Tim, but I'm, I'm guessing I did years ago is what if I did the opposite for 48 hours is a really good question. If you're stuck. Meaning this could be with a spouse, with like with parenting, like our two-year-old is a freaking maniac right now. Um, like she's just, she's, she's just, me and Bethany were talking about two-year-olds right before we started. She has a two-year-old as well. And it's like, man, they're crazy town. Um, two-year-old girl, the boys were not as crazy. She's just off the rails. Anyway, so we have a particular approach to parenting with her. It tends to like inflame her more. It doesn't like, it just the results have consistently been like, she gets more irritated. So a good thought experiment with that is like, what if we just did the opposite of what we're doing? What if instead of like trying to be super strict and hold her to a standard, what if we just like made her laugh next time that she did something to disobey us and we'd correct it and discipline her in a maybe softer way. Maybe that would work. Cause like, I, maybe it doesn't, but we don't have a lot to lose right now. So maybe we do that. It's also really helpful in your business. If you've been obsessing over some specific goal and you tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and, tried and haven't hit it, maybe just do the opposite for the next couple of days and see what happens. It's a shake the box technique. Just do the opposite. If it's not working, you got nothing to lose to so do the opposite. A couple other questions uh, that in this article, he goes, in the, he goes in depth on uh, and talks about a good bit, uh, gives examples of how this is useful. But what, what would I do if I had $10 million? What is my, what, what's my real target monthly income? That's TMI in his terms. What would I do differently in my life if I had $10 million in my bank account? And maybe you should do that now. Maybe you can't do it now, but, but maybe you should. Like Tim answers this of like, I don't know if there's anything I would do differently. Um, maybe you would. I don't know. It's a good thought experiment. Good, good. It's a good date night conversation with your spouse or with a friend. 
Like say, hey, let's just like sit down for 10 minutes and write a little note in our phone of like, what would it do differently? And maybe there'd be some things you'd buy, but like get down to practical day to day outside of like buying a house for your parents or paying off your debt or stuff like that. You, that list runs out pretty quickly, surprisingly quick if you write this stuff down. Um, what would you do different in your day to day life? Third, uh, third question, if I could only work two hours per week on my business, what would I do? Don't answer this question if you've been in business for less than three years and don't feel good traction. This is a total waste of time and a sidetrack for that. <laughs> so if you're starting, ignore the question. Been in business five to 10 years, you got some traction. Might be a helpful question, actually. Uh, if you're getting started, don't optimize for the four hour work week on day one of starting a new business. That is a path to doom and you never hitting a single goal you have. What's the least crowded channel? Really interesting Legion question. What if I could only subtract to solve problems? So Bethany's here from our team. And one of our goals this year is to, how do you articulate it, Bethany? I loved your number one focus for the year. Um, subtract one thing every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, that's good. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some like easy examples? And do you have a hard example yet of that? Um, yeah, so it can be like deleting an app off my phone um, or I did my taxes early, so I crossed that off my to-do list, which subtracted a lot of stress and something off my to-do list. Um, I've paid off debt, so subtracted that. Um, and then obviously like the decluttering and donating and discarding things yeah. too. So, yeah. It's an interesting way to approach solving a problem because it's like default is always to add right. um, to life and to problems. Like, well, we're missing a legion goal. So let's add more activity. We're missing a sales goal. Let's add more activity. We're missing X. Let's add more people to solve it. Like, what if you could only subtract and just like sit on that for a day and see what comes to mind? Uh, really interesting way to approach it. All right. So we'll, we'll send a link out to that article. Second thing, um, this is really interesting for hiring. So years ago, I think I learned this from Noah Kagan and Neville over at AppSumo, like in 2013 was the first time I ever heard of this concept. I'm sure it's been around forever, but it's the idea in hiring people. This could be for a contractor. This could be for a full-time employee. We just hired a new director yesterday. Um, so this is a higher level position and it's to resumes are fine. Interviews are fine. They all have their place, but eventually with those, you just kind of wind up guessing on the person. But Seth Godin said something years ago. So I saw on a blog post of his, that is the highest, the best way to hire some, the, the best type of person to hire is someone you've already worked with. <laughs> like literally people you've already worked with before, you know what they are completely. So you know exactly what you're, what you're hiring, what you're buying. Uh, a great way to do that for people you haven't worked with is to give them a paid project, meaning pay them. We paid $500, maybe a thousand dollars. We paid a, several, maybe a thousand for the top two candidates, I think is what we did for this director position. We just hired as a director of sales. So leading the phone sales team. And we did that by creating a Google form. And it was a, probably at least a 10, maybe up to 20 hour project. And we paid them to do it. But by the end of it, we could see how their brain worked. We could see, we gave them like our actual number one problems in the business to solve. And like, hey, this is our number one problem. Literally day one, this is what you'll be solving. So just tell us what you'll do now and we'll pay you for it. And if we don't hire, we might still use it. Um, but the point is, is to see how they work by just paying them to do work for you. It is extremely effective. Uh, so we'll include a link to the, maybe we should then clone this one <laughs> or make it uneditable or something. I don't want to yeah. flood that, that document. Uh, so we should probably make a, maybe a public version. We won't change anything. You'll be able to see how it works, but I don't want a bunch mm. of crap entrance in it. Uh, anyway, you'll be able to see, like you can click through, you'll see the videos where I set up the, pro I did all this myself. So I like made Loom videos and Google Docs of like, there's four, projects within it. You can see how this works as an example. I remember years ago, the first time I saw this, you can use this on like hiring part-time writers, contractors, full-time people. It works all over the scale. But I now think when hiring of what's the project we could give to the final two or three people and pay them a hundred bucks for, 50 bucks for, 500 bucks for, for something big and know unequivocally who the number one person is. And I knew within an hour of sitting down for the interview after the paid project was done, who the person was going to be. Uh, it was just super clear. I was pretty sure from the paid project, but after the paid project and a little bit of in-person conversation, it was just immediately clear. Without that, I wouldn't have known truly how they would do the job because they haven't done it yet. So how in the world should I know? Like, it's just kind of a guess. It's like buying a car without test driving. No clue. I'm just, but it looks cool. So let's get it. All right. So we'll send you a link to this test. So you can check it out and kind of start having an idea of the next person you hire or the first person you hire, how are you going to test them to make sure they're an A plus fit? All right. Last thing, last share is the, uh, we've been looking at, it's been a couple of years since we've uh, really paid attention or upgraded our website at all. Um, and it doesn't properly reflect our offer. You go to the website and have zero clue what we sell. Not a smart idea. We get 50,000, 100,000 visitors a month there. I mean, you have to really dig to figure out what we sell. 
uh, that's not really smart at all. Like we now have the core offer refined. We need that to then reflect over all marketing sales and product assets. So I've been looking around for just different homepages. Like what are some layouts? What are some designs that look good? And what do we want to accomplish with this? Just the first principles it. And I came across the trends.co homepage. Go check it out. Just trends, T-R-E-N-D-S dot C-O. Uh, we'll put a link in the text message that goes out tonight with all this as well. Uh, it's really cool. Really well laid out. Uh, one thing I thought was really cool about it is they have a monthly membership. Basically, it's uh, $19, $49, I think it is. You enter your email on the homepage and it doesn't say anything about membership. It just says, join the community. I think that's the CTA. Yeah, join the community. Finding the next big thing just got easy. Access thousands of vetted business ideas you can launch in a weekend in a community who can make them ha make it happen. Email collection, join the community. I would think I'm entering my email to sign up for a newsletter or something. I don't know exactly what's going to happen there, but it's kind of cool. It works well. If you go through this in the mindset of being a customer, the next thing you come to is that the CTA at the, or the headline at the top is try trends for seven days, gives a little quote, and then it's a $1 trial page, which that wouldn't really probably make sense in like our context with the higher end coaching product. But I thought it was really smooth. Like I would be very curious. We should probably dig in and just ask them and see how this converts and whatnot. But they've had this for a long time. So I'm assuming it converts decent, but a really cool flow to a homepage. The homepage itself layout was really good. And the design is really good. And I think what it does mostly, it's mostly optimized well, a few tweaks we would make. But I thought the funnel flow was interesting as well, where they didn't tell you click here to get your $1 trial. It was like enter your email, which allows them to then card abandon anybody that hits this page and doesn't buy and follow up with them. But also the ask is pretty small. It's a dollar. Um, so anyway, I thought it was cool. So I thought I'd share that. So trends.co, go check it out. Kind of walk through that in the mind of a client. And I've been a subscriber to their product. I don't think I'm subscribed currently, but I have been for a while. Um, and it's good. So go check it out. All right. Last thing before we talk to Andrea. Each week, I like getting your collective brain power on my number one problem or number one opportunity at growth tools, specifically a marketing and sales problem, because all of, a lot of you are super smart marketers and salespeople. So here's the question. I've been reading um, well, I've been reading this prospecting book I told you all about at the very beginning by Jeb Blunt called Fanatical Prospecting. I don't read many sales books, so this is kind of new to me. Uh, and as I'm reading through the idea, well, let me just ask you the question and I'll maybe give you context if it doesn't make sense. But here's the scenario. Um, Joanne, Andrea, Chris, Kofi, we hire you tomorrow. Growth Tools hires you tomorrow. How do you get two new clients per week for Growth University from calling all of our past leads? And you know, let's qualify a lead as, and I'm literally in chat, anybody that's here and uh, any client that's here and um, as a panelist, feel free to unmute and, and share. We have 6,000 or so people over the last two years. I think that number's right. No, 12,000 people over the last couple of years that have scheduled sales calls with us. You know, 30%, 40% never show up. We text them a time or two and they disappear. Uh, another group would show up, but we would never pitch. Another group we would get to and we'd pitch and they wouldn't buy. And then obviously, you know, the smallest percentage actually buy. So there's a whole group of like more than 10,000 people over the last two years that we, that know us, follow us, scheduled a call with us and didn't buy for any number of reasons. We would call them like a, I'd call them like a lukewarm to cold lead. They're not like cold, like they don't know us. It's not cold calling people off LinkedIn. This is cold calling into our own database. Your job, you have a database of say 12,000 people. You're commissioned with a single task of generate two sales a week from that. What do you do? And we'll pick one person with a cool answer. Uh, and we might even try it because we did this two weeks ago and we've tried some stuff from then. And we'll give an update on that maybe next week, but we'll give a book, the book of the week, the Dan Sullivan question out to maybe one person that gives a, a cool or unique answer to this. So you want it in chat? You want it live? Yeah, go live. Anybody that's live, go live. Anybody that's not, feel free to put it in chat. Yeah. I think the first thing I do is ask what attracted them to begin with and, mm -hmm. and really listen to them all the way to the end, continue yeah. to, to mine into it. What got you to the place? And then I would, as a customer of yours, satisfied, albeit in a short period of time, I would say, let me tell you my experience. Mm. So it's the, it's, the it's the question of what's their actual problem that they were looking to solve and then put, then applying my testimonial to their problem. Hmm. I like that approach. So do you want a job, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Happy to help though. Any, any way I can, you guys be great. <laughs> totally. I'm with you. I like that. That's good. So do you, do you just call them or what's the mechanic for contacting them? 
Well, if it's two a week, I'd call them because I'm, I'm, I'm super comfortable with, uh, with personal interaction. Yeah. And, you know, they say, you know, 97, 93% of all communication is nonverbal. Mm. So you get a lot more empathy. You can, you can kind of get in with them when you're talking with them individually in a way you can't in a Slack message or an email or a text. So, yeah. Yeah, but if I was going to try to scale it, um, I'd probably do something in Loom, you know, where they could still mm. see me. Yeah. And, uh, and and I could share my experience and maybe even give them a little bit of, uh, hey, this is what I like about the way growth tools walks me through each step, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, walks me down the path. So, yeah. yeah. How many people do you think you would have to call a week to get to two? Um, I honestly don't think it would be that many. I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I think the personal touch goes a long way and mm-hmm. testimonials tend to get people there. So I, I don't know, 40 Okay. I mean, the hardest thing is getting people on the phone, right? I used to book concerts for bands I was in. And the hardest thing, you know, it wasn't getting them to say yes, it was actually getting them to pick up the phone. Right, right. But, uh, but if you could, you know, if you if I thought strategically about what a way to do that, mm. you know, that would be one way. But I, I think people want to be heard. Yeah. And so you're giving them an opportunity to be heard. And uh, sometimes they come to your site and they don't actually see the answer to their problem even though it may be right in front of their nose, maybe it just hits them at a bad time. They had bad pizza, whatever, yep. but you, now you're giving them an opportunity. But as a, as a satisfied customer, I'm mm-hmm. telling them, Hey, look, you know, these guys are killing it for me. Yeah. And, uh, and you actually have a good guy, a guy that did that with me when I was talking with him about you guys. So yeah. Will was fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. All right. A couple, a couple from chat, Jason, hopefully your CRM has objections in it. Come back to them with a case study addressing that objection with proof of growth university methods. So Jason, how would you do that? Is that an email to them, a phone call to them, literally cold call them? Is that text and phone call or something? And Chris, that might be a way to overcome the just don't answer is mix in text messaging as well. Um, call them, text them, Agree. Yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I like Joanna's get on the phone and call as many people as I can. It's a numbers game. I, I think at the root of it, I think you're completely right. <laughs> I think it's just, you got 12,000 people. You can probably make 200 calls a day. If you got like a good phone system, just rotating through people like, halfway decent script that you evolve over time and you just literally smile and dial. Um, and hopefully in that, I think the key is getting people on the phone. So out of the 200, how many people can you get to pick up 10%, 20%? Uh, if you call 200 a day, that's when you get 10%, that's 20. If you get 20%, that's 40. Uh, and now you're probably moving the needle on something if you're able to do that. That's cool. Ben, you're, you're skimming through chat. Anything stand out to you that's worth calling out? So, um, Kenny uh, said, create a variation of the offer and position it to see if it gets them interested. And you could probably combine that with Jason's feedback for um, mm. specific objection. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, company research. So we just want to find out why you didn't buy and then maybe transition to a second call. Like, would you be interested in rediscovering like what's changed? Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Joanne um, uh, says it's just a numbers game. So just call. Yeah. <laughs> Rob said, uh, are you interested in, I'd call them and ask, are you interested in 3X seeing whatever number the offer was that led to their response, your business? Um, calling personally and following up would give credibility. Mm-hmm. Ron, call them with the idea of doing company research to improve the company. I think you said that one. Yeah. Luke said, Someone I said make around 400 calls a day and on average five to six people pick up per day that to convert. So Luke, what, what kind of people are you calling? Is this like ice cold? non-internal this is like calling into our own database people that are at least remotely familiar with us so much so they booked a call before and maybe even talked to somebody uh they definitely been contacted by us after booking the call so like i'm curious because those are interesting numbers it sounds like you're doing this so 400 a day that's a volume number what uh what type of leads are those i'm curious also email me brian at growth i'd like to talk to you more about this because it sounds like you're doing it uh develop rapport uh, survey with call follow-up Kofi, send a time-sensitive email. Have an opening in one hour. Oh, that's an interesting approach. Hmm. Um, Paul said, been on close on call, just an assessment approach, and no problem, no pressure. Just asking them for their experience, and it was a numbers game. Fifty-two calls, like a deck of cards. Forty no's, four waster time. A holes. <laughs> four, <laughs> four say it's funny you called. I could potentially use and need your service. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting as well. Hey, Paul, shoot me an email, Brian at Growth Tools. I'd love to like pick your brain and learn more about that. See, because we're seriously considering doing this internally because I feel like it's probably a big opportunity for us. That's why I'm going to pick y'all's brain on it. This is good. All right. Um, Paul and who's the other person? Ron? Let's follow up with them. 
Luke. Yeah, let's get their names and oh, Luke. Yeah, that's the one. Let's get yeah. their names and see if we can oh, get okay. their contact information and follow up. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. Who's the winner? I feel like Paul or Paul or Ron is probably one of the two. They both had good numbers based suggestions. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I was gonna go with Paul. I yeah, picking Paul on this one. Oh, Luke said your own data will convert at much higher rates. I'm calling blown up leads that get over 30 calls a day. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that's 400 oh, nice. to, to two is good. That's, that's yeah for just total cold people that are probably in mm. lots of databases. So cool, awesome. Thank you so much. So Paul, let's send one to Paul and Luke. Yeah, um, y'all get a book. Uh, send a direct message Ben or uh, Bethany on Zoom, and or just send an email to Bethany Bethany at GrowthTools.com. Send her your address. We'll get you a copy out today. This is one of my favorite books I've read in the last month. It's really short and powerful. We did a review at the very beginning. If you weren't here, uh, okay. So this is good. Thank y'all. This is really helpful. I, I love this segment because we always get uh, like good helpful stuff for me, and maybe you learn stuff as well. I, here's the interesting part: you wind up learning just as much, if not more, from helping other people then you do like trying to solve your own problems. Like I like one of the single best things I did for the first six years of this company was host multiple one-on-one coaching calls every day for the first six years of the company. And it was just me giving advice to other people. And like half the time I did in the call was like, man, that's a really good idea. I should go do that too. And I would go do it and it would work well. But then trying to like, like um, a guy on our team talks about you're so close to the Mona Lisa, you can't even see it in your own company. Like you just can't see the forest for the trees. So uh, this is maybe partly selfish, partly selfless. Uh, you get to, give me advice. I get to benefit from that. And you get to see a company from a different perspective and I hopefully get ideas yourself in that as well. So thank you. All right. Without further ado, let's meet Miss Andrea Lowell. Uh, I'll give you a quick introduction to Andrea and then uh, we'll get to know her a little bit, learn about some really cool stuff she did uh, that, that generated her sending an email to us saying I'm totally full and cannot take any additional clients. So, and, and Andrea, correct anything if, if I get it wrong here, any specific, but uh, Andrea sells coaching uh, and a online course. She's a life coach that helps people with self-awareness and trauma. Her coaching comes in the format of self of uh, uh, group coaching and one-on-one coaching. Is that right? Is that a, is that a good summary? Uh, pretty well done. Yeah. I offer really? one-on-one coaching services and yeah, we do group calls, uh, but you have to be in the program to get those group calls. <laughs> but, so the goal, the, I would say, let's just start with the goal of this interview is for anybody watching it to learn how you hit your client capacity with a handful of interviews, yeah. doing interviews on other people's platforms. Just see an example of that, learn some specific mechanics and nuance of how you did that and just see that that's possible. So first I want to learn like about the business itself a little bit, Andrew, and for everybody else to kind of, I'm going to ask questions if I know nothing. Uh, so anybody that doesn't know anything about what you're doing can kind of understand the lay of the land of your business. And then we'll get into what you did. So how would you quantify or describe the, the problem you solve for people? It's so funny. I'm so bad at these little one-liners. No. <laughs> well, you can, you can ramble good. through it too. That's okay. It is the, right at the podcast. Um, really, I help people find a deep level of self-awareness that they had no idea they were not possessing. And mm -hmm. once they become radically self-aware, they can actually solve most of their life's problems. So take your best fit client the handful of clients you do one-on-one -on -one work with that you love and you would photocopy them over and over and over again, if you could. Okay. What is a, what's one person's first name? Blanca. Blanca. What, what has been one of uh, Blanc, Blanca? Blanca's biggest results, like practical life results. She has got the job she wanted, relationship she wanted. She has got the self-confidence she wanted. She's basically creating a life that she's always desired, but just did not know how to get there. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we took all of the information that she already knew and we integrated it into mm -hmm. her everyday life. And what, what exactly does that mean? Integrated it into her life. So a lot of people come to me uh, with a head full of spiritual knowledge, uh, self-help knowledge. I'm reading books, I'm going to seminars and they're hot on it for a couple of weeks. They're so excited with adrenaline. Oh, I found this new way, but then the buzz wears off and mm -hmm. they stop implementing these tactics and this knowledge they just attained into daily life practices. So what I do is I just make it super simple. I don't make any crazy rituals or, you know, practices that are not going to be sustainable because if it's not simple, people aren't going to do it. So I take what people already know. I upgrade that knowledge a little bit more uh, by dazzling them with some information that they might've not heard before mm -hmm. and teach them how to live it. not just talk it and know it. So what did, to get really specific with Blanca, and if any of this is too private, feel free just a second, talk about that. But 
what did like what are two or three things she practically did that made a big difference for her with the job and the relationship side that you mentioned she put away her ideas because she was narrowing narrowing herself down by being too rigid to what she thought might be best mm -hmm. and we started focusing on her um, getting more in tune with her spiritual side. Let's mm -hmm. focus on gratitude. So I had her wake up every day and before she even got out of bed while well, her first alarm went off and she has that eight to nine minutes of snooze, I had her start practicing snooze gratitude. So mm -hmm. in that kind of weird theta state, she's thinking of all the things she's grateful for. And then by the time that second alarm goes off, she's awoken in this beautiful high vibration mm -hmm. and she's now living her best day from the time she gets out of bed. Yeah. Instead of worrying about the day ahead, she's now focusing on everything that's gone right. What's one more thing? So wake the as soon as the alarm hits, before the snooze button goes off, so it's 5 or 10, 15 minutes later, she's just running through her head, not writing yeah. it down or anything, just going through her head like, here's a thing I'm grateful for, here's a thing I'm grateful for, here's a great thing I'm grateful for. That adjusts her mindset to at least start the day, right. and she's more positive and open as a result. What's one more right. thing? Identifying when she's limiting her inner dialogue and self-talk. So mm -hmm. getting rid of those old programs and those old loops of the same 60,000 ideas we have rolling through every day, all day, and getting her to identify those and say, uh-uh, nope, and switching it. Mm -hmm. So it's two really simple things that, you know, don't have to be perfect. They just yeah. have to be practiced. I want to ask several more follow-up questions, but let's get to the marketing side. Like, how do you identify and then how do you switch it? But we'll save that for another conversation. Sure thing. <laughs> all right, so... Product layout that we now, but the reason to ask those is not, we, we all have a good sense of like what you actually help people with and how you do it. Now we can visualize that part. Let's get to the product side. You have to package up your methods into a handful of different products. My understanding is you have one-on-one -on -one coaching where you like work with the people individually. You have group coaching where there's a small group, a big group of people you're working with and you have do it yourself course type. What are, is that accurate? And then what are the price points of those three? So, at this point, I've actually decided to focus on just doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching with the online course, which is seven mm -hmm. modules as the basis, because mm -hmm. I feel like with this level of coaching that I'm doing really intimate, deep, private work, I want to make sure that I'm hundred percent available for the client. So mm -hmm. I've kind of switched to the more personalized side for right now, but I do know uh, in the very short near future, I will be doing exactly what you said and kind of going back to that. I just want to make sure that at mm. these initial stages of my business really succeeding, that I am creating the level of results for my clients. And also, let's be real, get those killer testimonials too. Yeah, that makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so price point for 101 is how much? It's 4447. Okay, $4,447. Right. And what, what's the term? How long is it? Um, they can. They have two months to pay in full. Okay. And, and how long are they with you though? That's not for life coaching with you. Is there a end point of the one-on-one -on -one with you? Right. So there's a, it's a seven module course. I give them eight weeks to finish it. So that's the okay. two months. I'm like, Hey, we need to be oh, paid gotcha. by this thing is done. But after that, I don't just leave you hanging to dry. You're mm -hmm. in the private um, online groups. You're in, you know, you're in those ongoing group calls. So mm -hmm. even though you've graduated from the course, you still have access to me without being on my calendar. Gotcha. Okay, so $4,500, uh, eight weeks, they get the video training and some other assets forever. They yeah. get you for those eight weeks. They pay $4,500 for that. Okay, that makes sense. How many clients do you have currently? That's a good question. I need to hire someone to know all these numbers for me. <laughs> I think, I actually don't know off the top of my head. I yeah. just know I can't take any more right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, greater than 10 or less than 10? Probably right around 10. Right around 10. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. I like to um, really have no more than that because um, sometimes, you know, our, our booked calls that I have with my clients, they're on paper, 45 minutes, but sometimes they go three hours. Mm -hmm. And I never, with this level of intimate yeah. training, I don't want anyone to be cut off because I have another appointment after them. I really want to give everyone exactly what they're paying for. And yeah. if someone needs to go further on the call, I don't want to hinder that because I have an appointment lined up. Yeah. All right. So you filled up your calendar. Um, you, you recently said, I got, I'm totally full. I can't take any more clients. So that's not normal for people to charge $5,000 for coaching and to be totally full, especially in the beginning of their program. So congrats. Great job. Also, what did you do? I followed your advice to a T is what I did. I had been, uh, 
I don't want to use the word banned, but not allowed to do Instagram or Facebook and Instagram ads. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't given clear reasons why I, um, you know, had been doing the learning phase and paying for this and having spent literally tens of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads over the past however many years. When I saw um, the way that you do things with partnerships, it really appealed to me because I was so sick and tired of being frustrated with Facebook ads, them stopping my abilities to, um, you know, make ads or uh, start it and not really giving me reason, not having support there. And I decided I'm going to do this. I'm going to um, get in front of other people's audiences and I'm going to share my unique way of solving problems that is pretty much universal across the board. And I make it my point when I do these podcasts to not have any canned answers. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't ask for the questions ahead of time. I want to be natural and real and authentic. And I think it's really important for us because obviously we're always marketing. We're always trying to sell, but mm -hmm my intention on these podcasts is truly to teach their audience. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, oh, and my course is, you know, $4,500 and you're going to get this, this, this. Mm -hmm. People are sick of that. And mm -hmm. I learned that from Growth University. Mm -hmm. People are so sick of all the pitches, pitches, pitches. And if I can just be authentically in my purpose, which is helping people get to the next level of, uh, level of their life, they're going to be attracted to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to really promote, except for at the end, of course, shooting them to an appropriate lead magnet for the conversation we had and making sure that that host has all the links um, for their show notes as well. So how many, pod you, you did primarily podcasts as your partnership type, so they also, have a big audience. I also you, did Instagram Lives, and I oh, picked oh, those two specifically okay. because they're evergreen. Yeah. Like someone's going to hear this five years from now, and I'm still going to have my same coaching services. Same thing on the Instagrams. I make sure that the account whose Instagram I'm going on is going to save it to their IGTV page. Mm, so those are yeah. my two kind of main things. Yeah, that's interesting. How many did you do to get full, to get your 10 clients? Do you have a rough idea? I would say, honestly, about six. And huh. It, and this is why I really was excited to talk to you because, you know, you and I and a few other people here, we were on the mastermind group mm -hmm. last week. Yeah. And one of the gals you were interviewing said something she had done like 20 or 30 or 60. It was some phenomenal oh, amount. Marty. It was a crazy yeah. amount. Yeah. And she had only gotten 20 subscribers. Right, so right. For me, it's more about the way that I am interviewed than mm -hmm. the numbers. I yeah. need to be authentic. I need to be present. Like I don't, you know, I'm not preparing it at all for mm -hmm. the podcasts. I'm, if you don't know it, you shouldn't be teaching it, mm -hmm. but I'm willing to take whatever questions are thrown at me and give real-time solutions based on that unique conversation. But if I'm sticking to a script and I got to hit my talking points, I'm not present. No mm -hmm. one's going to want that. So my best advice is just take you with you, take your medicine with you and don't get so caught up in, you know, what I need to hit and this and that. And, um, just make sure you hit your um, lead magnets or where you want to send people. But the thing about podcasts too is they're live to tape, meaning they feel live. But if you royally mess up, mm. the person can edit it. You know what I mean? <laughs> or if you miss your links, you could say, hey, can I um, maybe have you do a voiceover later? Or could I send a little audio clip where I'm saying, hey, and don't forget if you'd like to work with me. Mm. Uh, so things like that. I think we hinder ourselves on mm. these podcasts because we're so concerned with selling, 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 selling. And obviously that's why we're all here to have, you know, prosperity and make careers. But if we focus on our purpose, why we're actually here to help people, mm -hmm. the clients will come. And mm -hmm. that's what I have. That's what I've found. What did you do? So, so you have, we understand what your product is. One-on-one, -on -one, $4,500. You go on six, I think three podcasts, three Instagrams or something yeah, like that. And I had to stop. <laughs> yeah. You can't do anymore. How did you go from somebody heard you on a podcast to hired you? Like what's the process someone would go through? Um, they would hear me and they would typically either um, go straight to uh, the booking link to get a free self-discovery call with me. And yeah. then they become a client on that call. They say, oh, wow, there's something she said that I really need to implement in my life. And the coolest thing is a girl that was the host of a podcast, actually, as soon as we stopped recording, said, hey, I need your services. Um, are you taking any new clients? Yeah. So everyone is a potential customer. Yeah. Um, so it's just making sure that the next step that you give people 
is a very close step to getting you. You know, and this is straight out of, you know, GU. I'm not going to, I like that one click kind of gratification, not go here, enter your email here, sign up for this. And then maybe seven emails later, there's an opportunity to work with me. No, no, no. Strike while the iron's hot. If people love your message, get them there quick. Yeah. Which podcast was that one? That, um, that, was, that was, it was a podcast called Matrix Assassins. Okay. And this is actually cool because I didn't even know what we were discussing at yeah. all. Yeah, what is um, Matrix? What is that even? I don't even know. They're, it's not evident they from the found name. me through another podcast. And this is the cool thing too. Podcast hosts are always looking for guests. Mm -hmm. So if you do come on uh, a certain show and you're authentic and you mean what you say and you're clearly in integrity, someone's going to say, oh, I like that message or I like that person. I want her on my show. Mm -hmm. So, um, they heard me on another show. <laughs> they asked me to come on and they, right before 30 seconds before we went live, they said, Hey, we want to talk about, you know, the divine feminine and mm -hmm. these characteristics and, um, how our, uh, how everyone can start embodying more of these characteristics. And I'm thinking, well, that's not really my jam, but let's just, let's just do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it turned out it actually was my jam. I could use the principles that I use in my program to coach people to also um, attack it from that way. And the host loved, liked what I had to say. She was uh, one of my latest graduates, wow. paid full price, didn't offer her a discount. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, I also really want to like where my mind goes is yeah. for your offer specifically, I'd really love to see you have a ongoing high-end monthly fee for the people that want to go past eight months. Like if they right. pay, like some of those people would pay a thousand dollars. I mean, they're already paying more than a thousand dollars a month for the first three months right. or two and a three quarters months or something that my, my suspicion would be of those 10 people that are in right now, I bet half a quarter to a half of them or more would continue paying 500 bucks to a thousand dollars a month for some level of access. Although you'd have to control that because you can't have three hour rambling calls with all of them, or you just will wear out from that. But I do agree with you though. And I do offer that when we are done with the course, I say, if, you, mm. if you'd like my services on retainer, we can discuss yeah. that. I need, you know, I'm still new at this. I need right. a way to segue into that more smoothly. Um, and I'm such a giver. I kind of just want to keep, I right. want to want to keep helping people, helping people. Helping here's, people. here's your segue. <laughs> here's your segue. Don't have a segue. I love it. The, the, make the product. Mm -hmm. This is what we did. This is part of the single smartest idea I've ever had a business in nine years. We did that to our product. Um, and we we tried multiple versions. If anybody paid close attention to the our, our offer um, progression over the last year, you've seen it. Although it's a little harder to see in sales phone-based businesses because it's not super evident all the time. At any rate, we experimented with 90 days and then continue monthly. And that's just a beast to do because you got to have, basically they have to decide to buy twice. They have to decide up front and then it's over and they have to decide again. We're like, well, what if we just eliminated the second decision by making it part of the first decision? What if they just had to decide one time? So now the way we talk, you saw, we went over our offer like four times a day <laughs> in the offer workshop part. But the offer is what we call the product now is a monthly coaching service with a setup fee. I love that, that eliminates the need. That is very intentional, that framing of it, because it eliminates the need for, we tried to do a 90 day program at five to $10,000. And there's just a bunch of problems with getting them to convert after the fact. And if they don't convert after the fact, we can't help them actually reach our goal of helping them grow the business to a million dollars or past. We, we have to work with you for a year or two to get there for most people. Right, um, right. So by just saying up front for you, it might be, it's a $500 a month coaching program with a $4,500 setup fee. So that the continuation right. is not, is not <laughs> even an assumption. It's just literally what the product is, right. Is a monthly coaching program which will bring up your LTV in the 90 day window from $4,500 to $5,500 because they'll pay the first two fees in that 90 day period. Anyway, I think I that it. would work exceptionally well with your product. You have, you have to think of the, the fulfillment mechanisms of how that works, but right. you can use price of that ongoing monthly fee as one of your main levers, meaning maybe you have a cap of 10 ongoing monthly clients at $1,000 each mm -hmm. and you can take up to four to eight new clients in the mix. Like you just kind of like, you can meter a little bit better if you have ongoing monthly revenue. Because the problem on the other side is you're in this constant hamster wheel of finding new clients otherwise. Um, right. And, and you, you're doing the hardest work, which is getting them to pay you initially. That's the hardest work that exists. 
mm-hmm. is to take a cold person who's literally never heard of you before and they pay you five grand. Right. That's hard. Um, so just do it there. Anyway, we're off into random, random. But I love it. That giving. was that was epic. And you're right. And that is where I'd like to go. And I think mm-hmm. you just made it so simple for me. So thank you so much. Hey, okay. A couple of follow-up questions on podcasts and Instagram lives. How did you identify the podcasts to reach out to or in the Instagram lives, the Instagram accounts to reach out to? It really helped me to reach out to people that I had some sort of relationship with already. And don't get me wrong on my, you know, my dream 50, I had big, big names with bigger audiences that I did reach out to, did do the follow-ups and really nothing came of it. But every time I reached out to someone who I, you know, we had a, maybe even was a liking relationship or always liking each other's post. Okay. I know that they know my message and they trust me. Um, I would reach out to accounts and people, even friends in the industry. And uh, that was always a yes. But even those friends, they do take those follow-up emails. <laughs> mm, yeah. Friends can be flaky. But Sometimes I, I take more. <laughs> yes. So I really, I approached it from, I'm going to get off of this fantasy land right now that I want to hit these huge names. And I actually kind of want to cut my teeth with these smaller brands anyway. Why don't I get my experience going? And by smaller, I still mean like 100,000 followers and 500,000 followers. Um, and it worked. I reached out to people that already knew who I was and it wasn't going to be a big reach or sale and uh, sell to them. And it just went beautifully. And -hmm. typically I reached out to people who I was already a somewhat fan of theirs. Now, these weren't people who necessarily do exactly what I do. These are those, you know, shoulder relationships Mm -hmm. where, you know, um, part of my coaching in module five is like um, upgrading your manifestation abilities because now we've become this clear channel. We're self-aware. Let's start calling in what we really want. So I can now go on more esoteric, hippy dippy, trippy um, people's Instagrams. Mm-hmm. I can also, you know, go on relationship advice Instagrams or podcasts because I teach about relationships as part of my integration um, coaching. So pretty much. In these seven modules of my coursework, I can kind of look at all the different topics and then mm. use those almost as shoulder uh, yeah. partners. That's a smart way to do it. I haven't thought about that before. It makes complete sense. Just look at all the different topics you teach and touch on and go look, yes. go search for podcasts and partnerships of different types related to those. That's really easy. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like easy. I like simple. Uh, and simple is sustainable. And if I'm going to get burnt out Mm-hmm. Um, trying to find all these people and getting no responses, it's not going to be good for my confidence and I might give up. Yeah. So am I doing the math right? You did six podcast and or Instagram lives. You brought in 10 clients at $4,500 each. So that's $45,000 from a handful of podcast interviews. That's, that's legit. Good job. Right. Like thank really, you. like really good job. That's impressive. I mean, but thank you because I, <laughs> I, could not have done this yeah. without the program at yeah. all. And um, yeah, uh, some people have even been reaching out to me about Growth University. I don't even yeah. know how they know about me. And I'm giving you glowing testimonials for you. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> you taught me these simple, sustainable ways. And that that resonated with me. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about paying for ads or ads mm. failing and you know doing all that horrific Facebook stuff. Mm. Uh, so I'm just so grateful. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, one, one last question on the partnerships piece, and I want to go high level yeah. and we'll, we'll end out. What did you say to them? So you make your list of people you don't know. You make a list of people you kind of know. You make a list of people you know really well. Yeah. Uh, and then you start reaching out from most likely to say yes to least likely to say yes. And you get a bunch of yeses. But like, what do you, what do you email them? And, or how do you con- what do you contact them on? And what do you say? I follow the template to a T, Brian. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going rogue. I give yeah. my relational anchor, you know, I might send them a screenshot of either something I've shared of theirs to my Instagram story, or I do feature people in my um, monthly resource emails without them even knowing. And That's I might smart. actually send them that like, Hey, I've been loving your stuff so much. I'm actually, you know, talking to my email list about you. Um, I'd love to teach your audience. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm using your template, but I'm being super authentic and enthusiastic. I want them to sense my eagerness and excitement to partner up with them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to send a flat letter because even me, I get weird um, emails from people that are clearly like bootlegging what you do, but it's not what you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh God, no like delete, delete, delete. So if I'm getting them and I'm, I don't even know why I would be getting them. 
everyone's getting them. So I need mine to stand out. And there's nothing more important about what we do as professionals than enthusiasm behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Andrea, you're a baller. So are you, man. 50K, (laughs) totally sold out program. Uh, Just listening and doing like great work, like legitimately really good job. Thank you for sharing so much. We got a few links to the three podcasts you went on that Will communicated with you on. Is it okay if we share those with folks so they can go listen and kind of see? I think it was really helpful for me to see just how people execute it. Meaning like, like, what did you say on it? Literally like, how did you get something to your website? What did it sound like? How can I copy that? So we'll put all those in the SMS we send out at 7 p.m. Uh, for those of y'all, maybe Ben, drop the number again if anybody that hasn't uh, put in for that. And we'll send out those so people can just listen to them for themselves. And one, they'll hear about what you do, which I'm super interested in. And two, hear how you did what you did, which I think is just as important as the mechanic. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for being so open and being a great client. My pleasure. Thanks for being a great coach. Absolutely. Have a good one. You too. All right. Uh, so we got a, a, two more things left. Uh, one, um, we're going to talk about what we're going to do next week, the workshop for next week. We got a cool topic picked out. Also, everybody, like, we, I feel like we moved on from Andrea too quick. Everybody give Andrea a good job and thank you in chat. Uh, I know there's 50, 50, 60 people left in here. So uh, we've gone almost two hours, which might be an all time record. Uh, so, everybody, uh, you get to the immediate VIP club just by being here still. Uh, so everybody give Andrea a shout out. Thank you, Andrea, so much. We're going to round up a ton of the resources that she mentioned, her booking page, those three interviews, and you just see them all. So see how she does it. Um, so we're going to do two things left. Number one, I'm going to introduce the topic of our workshop next week, which is a really cool one we haven't taught on yet. And second, um, this is kind of like you can stay on if you want, but me and there's several Growth Tools team members here. We're going to debrief on this shop talk because we have some goals around this shop talk. What we're trying to hit, we're just going to, we had a call scheduled for after this instead of going to another Zoom. We're just going to do it here. So you can, one of the keys is to show you what we do and how we do it uh, to shop talk. So you get to see it. So feel free to hang on and, and listen to that or not. Also, if you want to work with us, like Andrea has, uh, she went above and beyond in her gratitude so much so that it made me uncomfortable, to be honest. But if you want to work with us like Andrea did, because we got her some great results and she's a baller and digital work, uh, text coach to 615-903-8108. And uh, a member of our coaching team will follow up with you. And just learn about your business, schedule the call, see if we could help you like we have Andrea. So if you'd like that, again, text coach to 615-903-8108. We'll respond back with a little link where you can schedule the time. Uh, and we'll send you all the resources as well. That'll get you on the VIP list as well. So we'll send you the replay and everything we talked about today. Um, yeah. All right. Will we get a recording? Yes. You just got a text about this call. That's cool. I didn't know we sent text out. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I think if you got a texture on the text list, so we'll send you a text at seven with the replay and all the resources that we talked about. Uh, all right. So next week, how to make $10,000 from your product before you even build it. Most of us, whether you, it's your second product, third product, fourth product, or the very first thing you've ever done online, want to do months and months of work to make the thing before you sell the thing. The best way to do it is the opposite. I'm going to walk you through next week how for I think every major product I've ever launched at Growth Tools, I always sold it before I built it. I'm going to walk you through how to do that, the ethics of that, how to approach that, how to do it if you don't have an audience at all, how to generate $10,000 in revenue for your product as a validation before you even build the thing. I'm going to walk you through mechanically how to do that. Um, so uh, this is the official end. There's an unofficial end of the team brief uh, debrief we're going to do on Shop Talk. So feel free to stick around. Also, again, if you want to work with us or interested in working with us and learning more information about our coaching program, we've gone over, we actually read the offer several times a day as a way of just teaching you offers. So uh, some of you might be curious in that. Um, yeah, definitely text coach to 615 903 8108. We'll follow up with you, have a quick call with you, uh, learn about your business, and just legitimately tell you if we can help or not. Uh, we want to get results for you like Andrea got. We want you to have your program completely full and make $50,000 in a few months from six interviews. Like that's the heart of doing uh, what we're doing. So anyway, if you're interested in that, let us know uh, via that mechanism and we'll do it. All right. Anything else, Ben? We cover everything? We ready for debrief time? Or got anything else we want to talk about? I think we covered quite a lot. Uh, we could maybe go back to a couple questions from the workshop that are lingering and then debrief. Oh, yeah. You want to do, you want to, why don't we get three questions if you have them and then we can uh, do debrief time. Yeah. yeah. So Brooke, who's I believe still here was asking where she would put the benefits of her offer uh, in the deliverables or if they even belong there. Um, They wouldn't be, well, hmm. so the, the time I would get into benefits would be if your deliverable type is not like immediately clear what it is. 
Uh, let me give you an example. Well, like the, the guys we looked at, I think it was Dan or, or I don't remember his name. O'Sullivan, I think was his last name. Yeah. And he called it a mentorship. Like, I don't, I don't totally know what that is. It's a little bit of an unknown category of a thing. Uh, like if I call, I'm trying to think of another example. Um, I might would do this if you have a group coaching product or you have a course that, or a product that has a group coaching calls. I might would say in that coaching pillar, you know, this includes every other week uh, getting on a Zoom call with me and 40 other people in the same boat as you. Meaning, and then I want to go into the benefit of that. Meaning you're never stuck on knowing what you need to do next. Oh, great. Grant's here in the panelist section. This should be entertaining. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if there is a slightly unknown category of a thing or something that needs a little more explanation, like that feature or that product type has a couple variants of what it could mean, then I would use that meaning phrase to describe the benefit a little bit. But what you don't want to do in the deliverable section is like get into sales language. It's just meant to clarify what the thing actually is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's good. We can let Brooke respond in the chat. Yeah, that sounds like we answered it. Cool. Um, and hey, by the way, how did y'all like Andrea's interview? Was that good? Curious. I thought it was like a baller interview, which is great. <laughs> we need to clip that and use it in ads and emails and stuff. Then that's fantastic. Yeah. Andrea did great. Super um, inspiring. Yeah. And great results. I mean, six interviews to 10, $5,000 a month or $4,500 a month clients. Like that's like top notch mm. stuff. Oof. Yeah. Totally. Did we pre interview her at all, Ben? Or did Bill, Will just go back and forth with emails? I'm curious. Because she yeah, was timed up like really well. I don't oh, know well, we did the. Pre interview survey just to give her the gist of what we were going to talk about and yeah. just so that we have more details going into it. Yeah, that's great. By the way, everybody, we're like shop talks over. We're just in debrief time. We're going to answer a few questions and like actually talk about our goals of today's shop talk and see how they went. So yeah. feel free to hang around or, or not. Cool. Uh, any other questions, Ben? Um, talk shop is shop talk grant. It's called shop talk. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we can't call it Shop Talk. LeBron has that copyrighted, but I don't think our 54 viewers on Zoom at two hours in really care at all. Uh, Yeah, Grant, you can like unmute and turn on your camera. You are on Talk Talk on the Shop Shop. (laughs) Grant, Grant. Um, Yeah, other questions. I think we, you're still muted. Other questions we had were just where the offer lives, but I think we totally addressed that with, you know, it's like the source of truth. Internal document. You can, you can use variants of that in marketing language and sales language. It should inspire your sales script. It should inspire your Facebook ads, your emails, everything, your product, like everything. That's the core of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but the thing itself, I don't know if you necessarily ever make it public. I mean, you could, it might be like your product information page on your site. You just design it a little bit. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, Georgia recording, send the VIP to the number that I'll repost and we'll send it later tonight. Cool. Um, all right. I think that's all the questions. So. Oh, dang. Go Did deep Jarvis deep. had to rename to Jasper? Really? That's what? wild. That's what Jason just said. Disney came after Jarvis.ai and they had to rename the thing to Jasper. But Jarvis blew up, man. Jarvis is not small. They went right. freaking supernova. They got on open AI immediately got all the licenses and they, they went fast. So they weren't, they were not a, they were not a small time thing. Yeah. I mean, relatively to Disney for sure, but they were, I mean, they got right. tons of VC funding and they're, they're, they're on the uprise for sure. Disney's also a shark about that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, we've, we've found recently some people are pretty anal retentive about that. <laughs> you should probably do copyright searches before sending email promotions out. For sure. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. What worked? What didn't work? Changes for next week on Shop Talk. What you got, Ben? Anything on your list? Bethany, Jeanette. Do. I think we should talk about whether the time change worked or not. Oh, I mean, we didn't have near as many people here. Honestly, this is right. the smallest one so far. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the reason for that is, but um, I got an, I got an, I got an email saying it was going to start at three p.m. Mm-hmm. So that was an auto a- Zoom email, right? Mm-hmm. there's an auto zoom email and then there was also a text message that michelle got it was like an auto text message i don't know what the text message was from but yeah i did i sent a text message blast to get people here but i think it might have taken too long to process oh yeah that makes sense you send it to remind them 
I sent yeah. it through uh, yeah. um, HubSpot workflow that was scheduled for uh, 2.45 p.m. Eastern time. Which so we had emails up. that told people it was at three, but it was at two. I mean, that could be, you know, that's probably. <laughs> well, the Zoom reminder email is because the shop talks have been scheduled out like right. indefinitely for 3 p.m. Okay. Central. And so yeah. I just didn't go in and update the time in your Zoom account. Okay. an hour earlier so that and that only went out to registration so that was just clients and yeah. panelists so i didn't yeah. know panelists were smaller too mm -hmm. like we had i don't know a dozen last time and three i mean it was fine i don't really care if we have a ton of folks but we might in the way we talk it up to clients um like they get i mean we workshop chris's thing and involved them in several things i feel like we could even lean into that more and more of getting clients involved because they're, they're I mean, keeping the handful of people on camera is really nice because uh, you can involve them and it was nice having chris because he was inter super interactive mm -hmm. uh, had both of them not talked at all that have been you know would have been missing a component but yeah um, yeah i think hmm. there'll be more clients here starting next week because today was the first day they were in mighty networks where all of these things are announced mm -hmm. So, so were I they told have, specifically about this one? I mean, the last time we had a yes. bunch, I feel like there was an initiative of some sort, but this week was there one? There, there was an email through Mighty Networks. There was an announce kit, but I did not put it through Drip because I was scared it would deter people from signing up to Mighty Networks with all the emails. Yeah, yeah it one. looks like in chat, Eric and Gene, text came in at 3.15, said it started in 15 minutes, so 3.30. Yeah. Eric got a text at 2.30, said it was starting in 15 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, and everyone's getting it at different times. Yeah. So we probably send, have to send that like much earlier. Yeah, the volume you send it to and the processing speed of that. I know one thing, Ben, in like legit SMS platforms is the number of, I don't know what they call them, nodes maybe, or something mm. where you could, because it takes like five seconds or some like one second or something to send a message. It takes mm. one second, that's 60 you can send in a minute. Yeah, yeah. You do that to 5,000 people and you're now hours after the send before people are getting it. And I don't know if those are the exact numbers, but that's a element. Sure. good sending SMS platforms will like, you can put like multiple Twilio tokens in it and it'll just like send 10 times at uh, a time or something yeah. like that. I, that might be slightly inaccurate, but that's, I know when we dug into the weeds of remind them when we were building that, that was like a thing. Because if you go uh, to send to that 50,000 person list and remind them, it'll take you like a week. <laughs> just because there's just too many people and it sends too slow. Yeah. All right. So what's the decision for next week? Um, 3 p.m. Central. Am, 3 p.m. going that? forward. 3 p.m. Central going forward. 3 p.m. Yeah. Central. Right. So go back to the time we were doing that. This 2 p.m. is too early for me. I do like that we're not ending at five. That's nice. Yeah. Um, uh, two things I wrote down on my list during it that uh, just notes was uh, Andrea actually said this. She said, on her podcast, she just said, if, if you would like to work with me, here's how. <laughs> I love that call to action, especially for the call to action at the end of the case study, because people are really primed by the end of that. Like they know what we do. They've heard a client talk about it for 30 minutes. Uh, and I feel like the awareness level of our offer and desire level is as high as it's going to be on the shop talk. And you can just have a direct CTA, which I kind of did verbally. The slide was different, but it's like, hey, if you want to work with us, here's how. Just type coach and we'll learn about you and talk to you and if it's a good fit, blah, blah, blah. The CTA could probably be a little tighter, but I like that if you want to work with me, language for that spot. The other thing I wrote down was just life coaches. This is like two weeks in a row we've had someone that would be in that broad category. Uh, mm. Like Allie was that. Uh, Andrew is a different flavor of it, but they're very similar problems they're solving for very similar types of people. Um, that might be a vertical to focus ads on or partnerships on or whatever, like focus on that. Like those are, both of them are obviously extremely best fit clients. Photocopying them and finding out where they are so we can will probably be really smart. Luke says he's got a system that can process over 7,000 texts in several minutes. We oh. need to have a conversation with Luke. What's the system, Luke? And do you want a job? <laughs> Yeah. You know, what's crazy is I think part of our issue for attendance, our first email had a 5.6% open rate a couple of weeks ago. It's 23%. It's wild. Open rate. Yeah. Which, wow. I, you know, and I think a higher click rate too. I'll go find the data on that. But. I mean, are the, are the list it's sending to the same? 
I haven't liked the emails near as much the last two weeks, to be honest. I don't feel like they've been near as punchy. Sure. But open rate is more about the subject line and the list you're sending it to. Yeah. The content of the email. Okay. All right. What did you, what worked, what didn't work changes for next week? Bethany, Jeanette, Ben, uh, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you change or add? I love that you were talking to Chris and it was a conversation and you were asking for his advice and you were allowing him a chance to participate. I, I thought that was really solid on a couple different, for a couple different reasons. First of all, it made Chris feel fantastic mm, yeah. um, as it should. Like that was great. He gave, he also gave a different point of view, but valuable as mm. well, which I thought was really good. But also in a marketing way, those people who aren't a panelist would be like, God, I'd love to be that. I'd love to get mm. Brian's feedback on my offer. Yeah. I thought that created a FOMO that's really good mm. um, for the product and to be a client. Yeah, that's cool. Good feedback. What else? Um, I want to go see how many people opted in with SMS because that's a really interesting point for us. Let's see. We have 53 people reply VIP and we had three reply coach and I haven't seen any bookings yet in Basecamp. Okay. Well, yeah, none yet. Hmm. So Drew, I, think I would prioritize all we said 53 and three like yeah. almost 60 people i would put those on your personal outreach list mm. um, I, I think i need access to that number ben because i'm not seeing it on my sales message page yeah well i'll just um tag everyone <clears throat> and then let you know okay i'll add them to a list okay like personal loom videos to the three people like really high touch with them and maybe something as high or maybe a notch below for the other 50 something people. Something that was yeah. noticeable to me is that um, we didn't have like a big drop off at the hour break. So Turns out if you don't say this is the end, people stay. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so surprising, Brian. <laughs> ben was right all along. <laughs> um, like we had, I mean, we had 80 people at 320 and we had 78 people at 425. So for over an hour, we hovered right about the 80 to 85 per people mark. So it felt like it was sticky. It didn't feel like the teaching went on for super long. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Christoph. I, Thanks for being here. And thank you, perfect. Joanne, as well. Yeah. Um, I really like the text call to action. I think mm. that's the, been the smoothest, best yeah. thing that we've done so far. Um, especially because it's so easy to just put in the chat, like, oh yeah, just text, you know, even for replays. Yeah, yep. Just text. Like it's the one size fits all answer for all your questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so I really like that. Yeah. The one thing, Brian, when you did the call to the action, the speed of your voice as if you don't already talk yeah. fast yeah. was so yeah. fast that I'm like, did he say coach or coaching? Like I didn't even catch it and I'm used to the speed you talk. Yeah. Um, I, I was like, that as well. slow down. Yeah. I was texting slow you, down. slow down. <laughs> ben, you need to be on the, um, you need to be on the um, speed talking police <laughs> and just make fun of me or something if I get talking fast. Yeah. It was like the raise hand thing in Zoom, yeah. if you can see me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> rap God. Yeah. Grant, what do you think? What was your experience? <laughs> You're useless. <laughs> oh, He's not Grant. He's <laughs> Grant. Huge, huge shop talk guy here. <laughs> I uh, did not get the email or the text message, but I want to be on all future lists <laughs> to be able to attend this. So every good show has uh, has um, characters, so you can be a character. I just want to be here, uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I had Maybe to find the link to be here. Maybe <laughs> I looked all over everywhere. I checked all of my emails. I did not have a link, but it, I made it work. Unsubscribe for our newsletter. How did you oh. find the link, Grant? I just started putting together combinations of letters and numbers and <laughs> made it here. 
but I'm never going to miss another talk, talk, shop, shop. Talk, talk, shop, shop. Yeah. His whole goal is just to make me laugh. The CTA felt good. The text thing felt good overall. Like the delivery was smooth and mm-hmm. you know, it didn't have any weirdness in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had 53 people out of probably, I would guess, 150 that were total live um, opt in. So that's 30%, probably not yeah. bad for the first time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, there were, I think, <clears throat> 50 people present when I did the final CTA for coaching. Um, yeah. And three of them applied. Did, apply, and yeah. one of them clicked but no one books. Right. Um, We should probably, for people that overtly ask for that, I'd be fine with like a last call thing, like two hours later, hey, just, or the next day, hey, Susan, Mm -hmm. just final heads up. Yesterday, you requested more information. Notice you haven't scheduled your call yet. Um, Just want to give you one last chance to do that. Here's a link. Just a little bit of urgency to nudge it. Also, I think Drew needs to like jump on those specifically. Those are like super hot folks. They just spent two hours with us. Yeah. They've heard our offer like six times on this one and interview. I mean, good heavens. If that isn't indoctrinated, nothing is. Um, So those are the lead score would be whatever the highest is on those. I guess we don't know much about them. So we don't know the stage and all that, but indoctrination levels high. What else? Did any of it feel clunky, Ben? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I feel like it flowed yeah. pretty naturally. Um, maybe the recommendations went a little bit longer than expected. Yeah. Like the recommendation is kind of like 10, 15 minutes almost on its own. Probably didn't yeah. need to be that long. Yeah. The speed. I love speed. Great name. This transparency is really cool as well. If the people are tuned in and hearing what's in store for them, it's probably has positive effects. Hmm. Yeah, I, honestly, I really think the biggest thing is just the attendance. And there's like a ton of weirdness going on with uh, SMS. And it doesn't make sense. We've had we had 152 or three weeks in a row. And then we had like 100, 120 last week and 70 this week. Like, yeah, odd. That's bizarre. Yeah. The yeah. With times in the marketing email, we're also off. Um, one of my clients okay. caught it. Um, actually, Chris caught it. Hmm. Which one? Um, the first. I'll go one. look through all of them. Yeah. Like the the Eastern time was correct, but then the Central and the Pacific were off. And Speed said there was an error on the Zoom sign in sign up page. It still had some copy from last week. Yeah, so it sounds like just overall the invitation process needs to be like heavily audited next week and cleaned up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I love the text invite, Ben, for some high priority list of ours. We probably don't want to send it to 50,000 people each week, but cost wise, but um, you can send it to like all calls in the last year, um, which would be a couple thousand folks, the VIP list, make sure email list, everybody's invited well, times are right, signups are correct, all that, just kind of going through it. <laughs> we need to have fireside chat with Grant as a weekly segment. Grant, what do you want to talk about? You actually need a topic, but. We're here for you. <laughs> uh, I can talk about anything related to Brian, what it's like to work with Brian, to know Brian, to be Brian's <laughs> friend. I can give a whole monologue on that. So I'm I'm an expert in that category. Mm. I can teach about helicopter evasion strategies. <laughs> That's different. Auburn basketball. Oh, um, now we're talking. Now, I can yeah. also talk about being a small business owner, trying mm-hmm. to build a business, hiring people, Growth mm. strategies, mm. focus, entrepreneurship, marketing, numbers, spreadsheets. Okay. We need a culture speaking. Many things you can talk about. All right. We'll uh, we'll we'll consider that in our evaluation. <laughs> You're about to be out of town forever. Hold on. Oh, Somebody fell over. Show up for this. Ron, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, he is doing his thing. Bruce is great. He's a really good dude. All right. I don't feel like we have near a list of things this time. It's basically get our marketing together so people will be here and do what we did again. Is that what I hear? I thought it went great. I don't, I had some feedback last week, but I thought, yeah, besides the invite stuff being messed up, I think 
everything else went really smooth. Everything flowed really smooth. Not saying the end was positive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Drew, anything on your side come to mind? I agree. I, I like the SMS. I think it's an easier transition than you know typing in the chat. One thing we could add though is, you know, if you want to hop on a call now, like right afterwards, mm. have that option, and I can take a few calls right afterwards if mm. someone yeah. has the time. Hop on a call now. Do what? What do they do? Have that. Have the one-on-one. -on -one. So. Instead of texting coach, you know, you could text talk now mm. and we can have that discussion. And you just pick up the phone, call the phone right then. Hey, maybe that, right. maybe you should do that on those three people. Literally just call them right now. You got their phone numbers. Yeah. Yep. I, I need, I need the, uh, who it is. Cause I didn't get those, the messages. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Yeah. And obviously we had an invite problem. Cause like, I think universally in chat, everybody's like, oh, I just got here. What happened? <laughs> So uh, that's probably the text message, but that, that's, uh, that doesn't really, because we haven't been sending texts for prior ones and we've got twice the number of people. So like, there's obviously mm. something wonky with emails or something, or maybe something just went really well that first time. I don't know, but there's something odd, uh, to dig into there. Yeah. Uh, so well, I have the one pulled up too. um, we had like 199 clicks on our first invite before, and we had sent two additional ones afterwards and our number one email that's so weird our number one email this time got 302 you didn't clicks so that shouldn't have been an issue and then is the 15 minute is it something with the webinar have we gone through our own sign up because like we just introduced the webinar last week versus regular zoom room so does something work differently and i've not clicked through from an audience member's perspective to see is something about the join process different i think so so I, I joined today from the landing page that we were sending people to in the email. And that's how I got on here. I wonder if you're not signed into zoom, what it is. Cause when I mm. click, it just immediately is there. But if you're not in zoom, do you have to like register? Like all of us are probably in zoom because we use it all the time. But if you're signed out of everything and you click that, what would have happened with regular zoom and what happens with, I think you have to download zoom. You know, what, hap what happened with regular Zoom and then what happens with webinar? I'll, I'll, I mean, if we got twice the number of people that click, but half the number of people here, like there's got to be something in between the click and the here that's causing the problem. Because nothing's really changed outside of we started using a webinar, which has been a win, I think, versus regular mm -hmm. Zoom because we don't get hacked from. Yeah, well, we've used webinar format now for two weeks, right? Right. But we were down attendance last week as well. Like prior to that, we'd had two or three 150s in a row. Oh, right. Yeah, you're right. But we did, but we did have 150 when we ran the first the webinar the first time and we didn't change any settings. No, we've not hit 150 with webinar. Two weeks ago, we didn't? No, uh, no two weeks ago uh, we did, but we were on regular Zoom. Last week was the first one of the year. Sure. So we, we did Cody. Oh, uh, Cody, Allie. And Cody then. was on webinar. Allie was on webinar. Yeah, I promise you. Cody was on webinar. Allie was on webinar. And Andrew was on webinar. So David just said, when I signed in, I was asked to download some other extension. I've never downloaded for other Zoom. Oh, mm -hmm. weird. That's interesting. Yeah. Here's something. We had almost 3x the number of 15-minute um, reminder email clicks previously than we did today. I bet if we switch back to Zoom, regular Zoom next week, I bet we're up to 150 to 200. Something's going on with Zoom webinar, I bet. Like to go back to Zoom meeting? Or just get YouTube and send people to that and just send yeah. clients to Zoom webinar. We know they can get here. Mm -hmm. Right. And just do everybody else to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And there's no friction there. Literally, it's just like open a webinar. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no software. There's nothing. And, and honestly, Zoom doesn't do anything for the average listener um, mm -hmm. that YouTube won't do even better. Mm-hmm. That's now, true. I don't know. I know right now I can click more and go live on YouTube, but we need to be able to send a link to YouTube like the day before. So I don't know how those two things have to link up. If you can do it in the settings or something to go ahead and schedule the event. And then you're sending people to that and they can even click the reminder and this, they experience it via YouTube, not Zoom. Mm -hmm. Would there be a chat on YouTube and a chat on Zoom? 
My guess would be, I don't know if they sync. My guess would be they'd try to pull YouTube in, especially if you actually connect via Zoom straight to, you, straight to YouTube, but I don't know. I, don't, I know you can use a third-party software like Ecamm and it will, it'll right. combine the two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm wondering about hackers on YouTube chat, how we would manage that if there would be any. There's definitely moder moderator options. Yeah. yeah. You just have to keep it, keep up with but it. But to do both, we did have one. We did have one chat hacker today. Oh, we did. Oh, was I, it, uh... yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they put it in Russian. It was a oh. vulgar phrase, but it was in Russian. But it always okay. happens when we ask people to share. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. But we only one. Are, uh, we could nice. have them share like a squeeze page or something instead, instead of the direct Zoom link, which probably filters it all out then mm -hmm. or something. The one step in between this, like not conversion hurting, but like a little friction for random dude yeah. pulling, scraping the internet for Zoom accounts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, Grant said he'd be the hacker police. Grant, I've renamed your Zoom name to hacker police, by the way. So <laughs> it's official. Just here to serve. <laughs> protect Aww. and defend it's the only way <laughs> so so ben can i say what back to you what i think you said to me the email generated two to three times as many clicks as it did a couple of weeks ago back and we had sms on top of that and we had less people okay other right? way around we had a third the total clicks for the reminder email this week oh than we did in previous weeks okay yeah. gotcha um, and SMS was massively delayed. So we could basically essentially writing that off because not very many people got it. Yeah. Um, so plug that gap. Um, yeah, I think that's honestly like one of the biggest things and uh, probably go back to the old headline format for the 15 minute reminder. Um, yeah. I even think the invite needs to, the invite email. <laughs> We need to make sure we, I'd like to put eyes on that into this week. I need to make sure I just get feedback on that one. Yeah. I feel like they could be a little, a little better. Yeah. But if you just have open rates or a quarter, then that's like another thing. That's, that's different. Yeah. I think that's, that has updated previously. Um, Cause I look, I checked last time at the time we started and it was super high, but now it's, it was still like 50% higher than what we had this week. So yeah. anyway. Okay. So you're going to dig into that. Yep. Um, sync some stuff up presentation wise, more of the same, some slight tweaks next week. We did some major adjustments this week. We seeded coming soon multiple times before the end to kind of keep people going. Drop-offs were basically negligible the entire time. It was like 70 to 80 the entire time I looked at it until like, the last three quarters of her interview, I started, it got down to like 50. That was the first little drop off I saw, but you're an hour and 45 minutes in, which is great. Um, so that felt good. Um, the book thing still feels solid. Um, which test one feels solid. Recommendations could probably be a little more efficient. Uh, we like the text thing so far. Um, ben, you'll send out a Google doc with all the links and have a CTA in the Google doc. Um, mm. Drew will hit hardcore the three, just call the three people now and then follow up with them and hit the 53 people with some personal touch. Um, yeah. We're consistently through every shop talk, have gotten a decent number of people to raise their hand and say, I'm interested in coaching via all the different mechanisms we've done. Getting those people into booking has been another thing. Um, mm -hmm. So curious if this one works. So. <clears throat> Cool. All right. Debrief done. Ron, you get the award for been here the longest and speed and JC and David Brooke. Appreciate y'all. Uh, Hacker police. You're not invited next time, or maybe we'll invite you and we need to find a topic to talk about and a place to put it, but fireside chat with uncle Grant. Uh, like, remember I had you on my podcast one time to talk yeah. about random stuff. So I did. Yeah. You're on it right now. You're literally here. You've been here for 45 minutes. We had you I wasn't on. invited. But uh, I'm going to be on all the lists for next week. This is true. <laughs> I'm going to be on vacation, but my one thing on my schedule for next week, show up for talk shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Always. Jeanette's a big fan of me being here. We need one life Thank tip from fun. Grant. One life tip from Grant. That'd be a hilarious segment, actually. You literally pop on for like less than 90 seconds and give one <laughs> one tip. What would your tip be, Grant? Today? Yeah. As it relates to Brian? No, just life. I'm going to give Grant. today's. Today's is related to Brian. Oh, I'm so excited. Right. Don't correct his grammar. Oh. He's going to he's gonna make typos. He's going to make mistakes. <laughs> um, but just, uh, just yeah, you got it. You're close enough. You're in the ballpark. I kind of get what you're saying. Don't correct I'm it. I'm numb to it at it, this point. It doesn't, it, doesn't taste. Oh. I was trying, Grant, as you were saying, I have one tip. I was trying to find the end button. So we just ended the whole thing right as you, right before you gave to give you anything, but I couldn't click it fast enough. Uh, all right. I'm sick of talking on Zoom. Appreciate you all. Yep. Next, next week, same time. Great to talk shop, guys. From St. Lucia. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Clients go, you know there's people listening? Yep, we're very transparent. <laughs> <It's not> <laughs> back. <laughs> That's the point. This is team debrief time. I guess I took That's the slide right. down so people late don't know what we're doing. But anyway, all right. See y'all. Have a good one. Thanks. Yep. Later.